Parker, who had 71 at bat. So still maybe getting used to seeing some Usually. big league pitching there, but he's starting to string together some games here where he feels a little bit better. We hope that continues tonight, Todd. All right, Julia, you see the lineup. Alex Bregman ready to roll. They face a righty tonight, Blummer. Giovanni Gallardo has faced this team a bundle of times in his career. Yeah, the Astros, not necessarily these Astros, but the National League Astros are familiar with Giovanni Gallardo. Spent a lot of time with the Milwaukee Brewers. You see his numbers last season with the Baltimore Orioles. He also pitched in the World Baseball Classic this season. He's going to come at you with a fastball, slider, curveball, changeup. The walks have been up in the last couple of years. Watch, watch for the Astros to really try and get him in the zone. When he is in the zone, they're going to be hitting the ball hard like George Springer is trying to do like Terry Poole and Craig Biggio. Leadoff home runs have been a specialty this year for George Springer. He already has four in his first nine games. Craig Biggio is the career leader in leadoff home runs with 53. It's a tough numbers to get to. He's already tied with uh, Terry Poole, but George Springer trying to make a name for himself in that Astros uniform, doing it right out of the leadoff spot. A.J. Hinch loves having that immediate threat in that lineup for the Houston Astros. It immediately puts that pitcher on guard. He hit eight leadoff home runs last year, already has four this year. Consider <laughs> this. He already has four leadoff home runs in fewer amount of games than the MLB record prior to that for three leadoff home runs which was 10 games. That's incredible. Now he's got a long way to go if he wants to try and break the next record, which is five leadoff home runs in the first 27 games of a major league season set by Brady Anderson with the Orioles. Don't go to sleep on this first pitch. You never know. He'll take it for a called strike. His last two leadoff home runs have been on the first pitch, but he takes that one. Kind of laughs about it at home plate because the Mariners are used to him ambushing. Most definitely. That might be why you saw that cutter on the outside corner. That time he swings through a fastball, nothing in two. Springer with his fifth overall home run. That also leads the major leagues. This guy is just dominating all the offensive categories, especially leadoff home runs and home runs overall. Four in nine games. George told the media after the game, just trying to hit the ball hard somewhere. It's not a bad idea, because if you're thinking about trying to hit the ball as hard as you can, usually you're going to get your hands in a good position. You're going to be loaded. Pop-up. Dyson's so used to hitting home runs, he drifted back, and Motter has to make the catch over the shoulder. Dyson's so used to lead off home runs, that pop-up fooled him. And Taylor Motter made a nice play. Made a very nice play, and I agree with you. I think Dyson was anticipating going back on this ball when he saw the swing from George Springer. In the brief moments we've seen Taylor Motter out there. He's three doubles last night, made a pretty good defensive play right there. Getting a chance to play shortstop on a regular basis with the injury to Gene Segura. Here's the new number two hitter, Josh Reddick. Had himself a nice game yesterday with a bunt single and also singled and scored to run his first time up. Kind of a different look, but also something A.J. Hinch has been thinking about for a little while, not necessarily a reaction to Alex Bregman, and more so just getting a chance to face a righty who they haven't seen much right-handed pitching so far this season. Yeah, I think this is something A.J. has wanted to do this season, but like you said, and Julia said too, coming out of the break, that six out of the last seven starters have been left-handed. It's tough to man, you know maneuver these guys in that lineup and get them in a position where you want to maximize their abilities. Josh Reddick is a, a good strike zone knowledge type guy, has been swinging the bat well, but he's also, it's interesting, if hitting two hole and being a left-handed hitter is nice because if George Springer gets on base and that first baseman holds on that base runner, opens up a wide hole over there, unlike you see right now with the shift on. No doubt about it. That is a, a great spot for a lefty to be in. Reddick with a count of two and one against Gallardo. Takes a pitch on the inner half, two and two. But don't kid yourself. We talk, we, we've seen Reddick down uh, in the bottom third of the order. You got to throw these guys a bone every once in a while and tell them, hey, I know you're not a 7 8 guy. We're going to put you in the two hole when we get the opportunity. On one hop, backhanded by Seeger, only infielder on the left side, and he makes the play to retire Josh Reddick. And there's two outs here in the first. Gallardo, a 31-year-old right-hander, seems like wherever he has been, 
Lummer mentioned back in the National League with Milwaukee, Texas Rangers a couple of years ago, Baltimore last year. Wherever he has been, he has always pitched well against Houston. He really has good career numbers. On the ground right side Jose Altuve who had a multi hit game last night and his first run batted in and his first extra base hit starts out tonight with a single to right field on the first pitch he sees. It's good news he's starting to feel it we're going to take a look at our MD Anderson strike zone see where that location is. Fastball in the zone and that's where as Altuve has been very good we saw him make the adjustment last year really laying off pitches outside the zone starting this year chasing outside the zone a little bit creating some issues but that's the Altuve we're used to seeing shoot the ball the other way get that knocked out of the way and all of a sudden he's going to get greedy in the next couple ABs. Here's Carlos Correa with a runner on and two outs. Altuve had a multi hit game on Sunday at Minute Maid Park Then he had the multi hit game yesterday and he starts out today with a base hit all five of those hits have been to right field. A lot of hitters when they struggle will say I'm trying to go the other way and what they're saying is I'm trying to let the ball get deep and shoot it that way see the ball a little bit longer. It's a much easier adjustment to let the ball travel than trying to slow your swing down if you're hitting a lot of pitches off the end of the bat it's much tougher to slow down and bring the ball to you. Altuve hit a rope down the right field line last night for his first extra base hit of the season. Jose with 201 career steals had one last night. He is one shy of tying for sixth place on the all time list in Astros history. Towards the middle Motter the shortstop with the glove flip to Robinson Cano and that'll do it for Carlos Correa and the Astros Seattle coming to bat. Scoreless as we head to the bottom half of the first inning. Seattle coming to the plate with Gerard Dyson leading things off. Mitch Hanniger will bat number two. Robinson Cano, Nelson Cruz, Kyle Seeger, tough middle of that lineup. Taylor Motter moves up from nine to six. Why not? Three straight doubles last night. Mike Zanino behind the plate. Mike Freeman makes his first start of the season. And Leonis Martin in center field. Mike Fires facing the Seattle Mariners. Last time out against Kansas City, he threw a quality start going six innings, gave up five hits, gave up one earned running through 97 pitches in that, but you see the usage pretty well spread out. He is going to all of his pitches with regularity, trying to mix it up, keep these hitters off balance. We've seen over the last couple of years that ground ball percentage going up for Mike Fires. We'll get into that a little bit later. Fires misses to Dyson to start the bottom half of the first inning. How about a little Alan Ashby and Charlie Kerfield jerseys here at Safeco Field. I like that. Kerfield is chick ball. I learned that from Ash working with him. Uh, it's good to see those. Every time we come to Seattle, we see that same combination, but a uh, couple ex teammates. Nice. Good to see. Especially in the special Rainbow Unis, too. You can't deny that. Those are beautiful. 
Brings back memories, good memories. Gerard Dyson leading things off for Scott Service and the Mariners tonight. He has been in that one spot since Segura's injury. Gene left the game here on Monday, was placed on the new 10 day disabled list. And Fires has fallen behind with the first three pitches, 3 0. Oh. Fires worked with Evan behind the plate. They worked out of some jams in that first start against Kansas City tonight, working with Brian McCann as his battery mate. And four straight pitches outside the zone. So the speedy Gerard Dyson, who stole 30 bases last year, with a leadoff walk. Seen fires in the last couple of years also having to pitch out of a lot of damage. Last outing he went, talked about that quality start, had three walks in that game. But Dyson is a bona fide burner. Yeah, he will have to have some attention paid to him over at first base as Mitch Hanniger digs in. Anniger, the young Mariners outfielder coming into this game. The 257 batting average, three home runs, six runs batted in. You mentioned Altuve with over 200 career steals. Dyson, Ooh, by the end of this year, could be there. That was a close play. Fires 30 starts last year, 30 starts the year before. 2015, the year he came over from the Brewers to the Astros, made some history shortly after joining the team. Fastball rides inside, one and one. Fires first start six innings of two run baseball gave up five hits. Did a good job limiting damage though with runners in scoring position. He was very good last year and he was very good in his first start against the Royals. They were 0 for 6 with runners in scoring position. Hanniger fouls one away. It's one and two. Astros look to continue to get solid. Starting pitching, it's been kind of the theme this year. Good to see the offense get going last night. It's been a pitching dominated first eight games, and then the Astros put up seven runs on 14 hits last night. I think the biggest cheerleaders in that dugout might have been the starting rotation bullpen guys <laughs> cheering on that offense. Breaking ball in the dirt, it's two and two. I'll tell you what, we showed the pitching pitch usage for Mike Fires in that last start, mixing up. A lot of off speed in with that fastball. I'm kind of surprised to see Gerard Dyson still at first base, knowing that there's going to be some off speed being thrown. Those are usually good pitches to run on. Especially with Fire's ability to get the ground ball, want to try and stay out of the double play, and you want to get in scoring position for the next two guys, Cano and Cruz. You think Mitch Hanniger is in the early lead for rookie of the year in the American League? He's right there. <laughs> he's leading in every category. He's leading in every yeah. I would say he's right there. Yeah, he, he's the early leader. Hits, runs, walks, home runs, RBI, extra base hits. And he's done it all. And, and he plays a good defense too. Last night he had a play that Mariners fans wish he could have made. That was an interesting play. And it may sound like you're being harsh or I'm being harsh on a guy, but I thought that was a play that should have been made. I think his manager Scott service agreed with that. That became a five to three Astros lead when that base was loaded flare to right was not handled. There goes Dyson pitches grounded foul. Oh, wow Schinberger. <laughs> All right. Taylor. Handing out souvenirs after she knocks it down off her. She went with a skate save instead of a glove save. <laughs> Kept it in front of her. Hey, that's all that matters, right? Made the play. Hard to believe it didn't hit that massive glove.
Dyson holds this time and Byers gets Henniger swinging and missing. First strikeout for Mike Byers. One out here in the first. He could pitch. It looked like a split finger. It was a slider that backed up. I'm Ooh. not sure. But when you see a swing like that, well, that was a split, wasn't it? Kind of diving down and in. You could see the rotation slow down a little bit on it. That thing really had some great movement in on the hands. It's impressive. Here's Robbie Cano. See what Cano's done through nine games and also what he's done against fires in his career. Time was called before Fires made that motion of first. Casey Candell, first base coach here in Seattle. There's Casey. A lot of Astros ties on this coaching staff. It really is. Cano takes a call to strike nothing in one. You heard from Mike Hampton earlier in this series here in Seattle as he talked with Julia Morales. Also, Blummer had a chance to catch up with him. There you've got Scott Service, two different times a member of the Astros. Finished up his career in Houston. Tim Bogar, bench coach. Hands here. Not thrilled with the amount of times fires has thrown over to first. And now Dyson will take his time after that last pickoff attempt. Boo all you want. That's a smart move for Mike Fires. Help out your catcher a little bit. Saw from a couple of those angles with the base running in the background. Fires has picked over so much that caught Gerard Dyson kind of flinching back towards first base. Swing and a miss. He's ahead of Cano, nothing in two. Fires appearing against Seattle tonight. For the fifth time in his career, his best outing came here last year against the Mariners, where he went six innings of three hit shutout baseball on September 17th. Stairs one and two. Looked like a pretty good pitch. I wonder if Cano was looking for something else, maybe something off speed, but looks like caught an edge on the outside. That definitely wasn't up. May have been just a little bit out, according to the home plate umpire Bruce Dreckman. Astros and Mariners both have their first off days of the season tomorrow. There goes the runner, pitches down low. McCann can't handle it. Dyson has his second steal of the season. And now he's in scoring position with a 2 2 count on Cano. Good pitch to run on off speed down in the dirt. McCann does a good job of picking it, just couldn't make the exchange into the bare hand. Now the Astros will be aware of Dyson as he. Has the ability to steal third as well. Correa will be very close to the bag at second. Nice play by that fan. Very nice play. Full extension. He got out there on the field. It's tough to anticipate the hop off the pads. Good job. Last year with runners in scoring position, Fires allowed a 221 batting average. To no tires of waiting. Fires has been delivered this inning. With the speedy dice and a leadoff walk. That's one area fires improved last year as well. He 
limited the walks, but tonight a four pitch walk coming out of the gate. Now the count's full. He was ahead of Cano, nothing and two. Dyson's been doing his best to create a commotion behind fires and kind of divert his attention before he makes the pitch. He's on the move. Line drive, base hit into the left center field. And that'll be an RBI base hit for Cano. Mariners on the board. First, it's 1 0. Hear it all the time about leadoff walks coming back to haunt you. That one did. Leading off this ball game was Gerard Dyson with the walk. And like you said, he was ahead of Cano in this count. But Cano battling back to that 3 2 count gets himself a fastball doesn't try and do too much. A little bit of a sawed off jam piece to center field but a knock nonetheless with an RBI. So here's Nelson Cruz. Cano with three RBI's in this series. Against the Astros he did not have any in that first four game series as Cruz. Swings through that pitch from Byers, nothing in one. Always worry about the middle guys in this lineup. Cruz following Cano, Seeger on deck. There's a breaking ball for a call strike, nothing in two. Cruz's bat starting to come around a little bit. Four for nine in this homestand in this series against the Astros. A couple of RBIs. Came into this series with a two for 25 on the season. And he rips it to left field. This ball is down for a base hit. Aoki makes the play. Cano heading to third. Correa will toss it back into second. And Cano and Cruz with back to back base hits. That it was a line drive off the bat of the Seattle designated hitter. Yeah, that's an elevated fastball with two strikes. Not a good pitch in that count. Trying to get in on Nelson Cruz. We've seen it this whole series. Even back home, they're really trying to tie him up. But he's getting a little more comfortable at the plate. So now runners on the corners with one out. Fires will deal with the left hand hitting Kyle Seeger. Seeger has good numbers as you see four for nine against fires in his career including a home run. During spring training fires was in a battle for a spot in the rotation. And ended up getting that final spot. In A.J. Hinch's starting five, Colin McHugh went down. And there was some uncertainty whether McHugh would be down for one or two starts. As it turns out, Colin's going to be out for at least the next six weeks. Fires delivers a strike on the outside corner, one and one. So Fires, who did make those 30 starts last year, should be getting the ball every five days. Facing the Mariners tonight in his second start of the season after a good start against the Royals. Breaking ball does not get a chase from Seeger. It's two balls and a strike. Fires would like to see these hitters chase that breaking ball down, just smash it into the earth, get a ground ball. Could use one right here. On the ground towards short, and it's bobbled by Correa. 
throw late. Everybody safe. Run scores. And it's 2 0 Seattle. Tried fielding that ground ball on the run. Didn't get his hands in a good spot. We talk about it all the time. If your feet are not in a good position, it stiffens up those hands. And I'm not sure. I thought maybe Carlos Correa thought that ball was hit a little bit slower than it actually was. You see him coming in. It looked like he got in a little bit, but it's still a pretty firm ground ball to turn. But you see him feeling it on the run. Made those hands a little bit more firm. There's a good look at it hitting the heel of the glove on our Supermo brought to you by Manchester Firm. Goes on an, as an error on the Astros shortstop. It is an RBI for Seeger. You can't assume a double play, but that really could have been an inning ending double play. Absolutely. That was the ball Mike Myers was looking for. Ground ball right to the shortstop. Here's Taylor Motter. Motter didn't have any hits on the season, limited action, 0 for 7 until last night. Then he hit a double his last three times at the plate. All of them either down the line to left field or into the left field corner. And there is a called strike, one and one. Honor coming over in the offseason from the Tampa Bay Rays. He's a super utility guy, could play in the infield or the outfield. But now getting a chance to play every day at shortstop. Fires misses, it's two and one. Well, Fires hasn't been his sharpest in the first inning and also didn't have much defensive support on that last ground ball and is facing a two runner on one out situation already down two nothing. Popped in the air. Jose Altuve infield fly will invoke. Altuve puts it away out number two. Center cut got away with one there. Remember this inning 28 pitches right now for Mike Fires. Could see a couple more to Mike Zanino, but that ground ball added a couple more pitches to that pitch count. Or I should say the error on the ground ball is what's adding to the pitch count. Because now Fires has got to fight out of this inning. I yeah, worked through this lineup with an extra out never easy as the Nino fouls went away. Mike had the night off last night. Carlos Ruiz was the catcher. Kind of what Scott Service is looking at maybe once a series once every five games or so giving Zanino a break and letting Carlos Ruiz catch. Foul past Manny Acta. Whoa. The crowd is not pleased with Taylor's action. Good effort, though. It is a good effort. That's what it's all about. And that's one thing these girls down the line, even some of the young men that arm the foul territory, they give it their A plus effort. Remember, a couple times, we're going to Oakland next. A couple of kids out there to lay out. I mean, they get dirty trying to knock that ball down and save those guys in the bullpen. You have to have range in Oakland. Big time. 0-2 pitch, Jess misses, 1-2. Fires wanted that one. I think we all wanted that one. I think that was a strike. I know that um, Brian McCann wanted that pitch up in the zone. That one's crossing right at those knees. It's a strike. Yes. Any which way you look at it, that's a strike. Instead, it's 1-2. and two. Zanino gets another shot, and he goes down swinging on the breaking ball. So... Fires allows two runs, one of them on the error, and we are through 1 2 nothing Seattle.
poll. Make sure to jump on Twitter. Follow us at Root Sports SW and vote. Today, it's a stringer, or it's a Springer Stro poll, I should say. Check this out, which Astros home run record is Springer most likely to break. Homers in a month, homers in a season, career leadoff homers, or home runs in April. And you see there who's holding all of those records right now. Ooh, good luck catching up with some of those records for Jeff Bagwell. <laughs> those numbers are impressive. We'll tell you who wins later in the game. All right, Julia. Second inning baseball. By the way, how's the birthday going so far? Got a little visit from Mariner Moose before the game. Well, Mariner Moose surprised me with a little hoppy birthday party, as he liked to call it. <laughs> Crashed my live hit in the pregame. Yeah, that was pretty special. That was good. My mascot friends are great. Yeah, they love you, huh? I think Orbit set it up, actually. Did he? So Ooh, I got to give him sneaky. some love. Mm -hmm. nice. Well, happy birthday. Happy birthday, Julia. Thanks again. Pitch misses one and two. The players all know. Oh, I try not to tell them anything. <laughs> They'll probably <laughs> prank me or something. <laughs> <laughs> Unless they know the better. One and two the count on Beltron as we begin the second inning. Beltron sends one down the line and left. Long run. Dyson still on the move. Gerard will get there. That is not an easy play, but with speed, he made it look easy. There you go, Julia. Weren't the players in the dugout at this point? Maybe not. No, I don't think so. That, they were stretching, maybe. I had no idea this was coming. <laughs> look at you. This is live television during our pregame show. <laughs> <laughs> he went all out, didn't he? He's great. He is. He's one of the best. Very cool. Very cool when opposing mascots wish the reporter happy birthday. Come on, it's Julia. Yeah, I like it. It's good stuff. Though. Everybody loves Julia. I don't think it ever happened to me. <laughs> well, didn't uh, <laughs> Well, she she was on a mission. She usually what year was it that you took all she took all the pictures with the mascots. So she got to know them pretty good. Oh, okay. I didn't know that was part of the mascot background. selfies. Yeah, that was a thing for a while. I I think I got most of them. Might be a couple I'm missing. I actually now that you say that I need to go back to my Archives. Well, I'm glad you're friends with all the mascots. That's cool. <laughs> Very good. Birthday celebration with Mariner Moose as Alex Bregman in the new six spot for him. First time this year. Takes a strike, two and one. Bregman with his first RBI this season in last night's game. Had a couple of hits. He was two for five in that game. Battles one back. It's two and two. Giovanni Gallardo, like his pitching counterpart, Mike Byers, both 31, both former Brewers, teammates for a number of years. Getting a start head to head tonight in this final game of a three game series. Gallardo with a couple of runs to work with. And he misses the edge. Counts three and two on Bregman. I actually appreciate the fact that Bruce did not call that pitch a strike. We've seen, we saw a pitch. Out of the hand of Mike Fires in a similar location didn't get called on Mike Zanino. Consistency. Pretty good hack there. Stays three and two. See the breakdown for Gallardo's pitches. In his first start, he threw 21 of his 22 sliders to right hand hitters. This is there. Ball four. So a one out walk to Alex Bregman. And that's the issue for Gallardo. The ability to keep the ball in the zone. Last year, 4.65 walks per nine innings when he was with the Orioles. He has 63 walks since 2015. That's a lot. Just over 13%. Major League average is eight. Yeah, that's pretty extreme to be five percentage ahead of the average five percentage points ahead of the average as Brian McCann takes a call strike nothing in one the first pitch strike was an issue too last year just fifty four percent that was his lowest 
first pitch strike percentage in seven years. Breaking ball on the ground. Nice backhand play, Freeman. And taking their time to complete the double play with Seeger coming over is Gallardo covering, and that'll do it for the Astros. Freeman starting the nice double play to end the inning. It goes 3 5 1 officially. Tonight, the Mariners lead 2 nothing as we head to the bottom half of the second inning. Astros with the wrap-up game of a three-game series tonight against Seattle. These two teams have seen each other a bunch in the first ten. Four games at Minute Maid Park, and now a three-game series here at Safeco Field. So seven of the first ten games on both schedules with these two teams head-to-head. -head. Here's Mike Freeman getting his first official at-bat of the season. Freeman was called up from AAA Tacoma. After the game on Monday when Segura was placed on the DL. Did get a pinch hit appearance last night. Walked and scored a run. In a two run ninth inning against Ken Giles. He sends one high in the air. Deep to right field. Freeman in his first to bat of the season. Hits a home run. Mike Freeman. With his first major league home run. And it's 3 nothing Seattle. Well, I was about to question the fact that Freeman was in the lineup, and then he goes and does that because the regular first baseman Danny Valencia was hitting 364 with two home runs against Mike Fires. This is a cookie thrown right in the middle of the well, middle in 85 mile an hour slider breaking right into the swing of Mike Freeman. Freeman not exactly a home run hitter in the minor leagues in 742 games. There's a bunt pop up off the bat of Leonis Martin caught in foul territory by Yuli Gurriel for the first out. In 742 minor league games, he had hit 18 home runs coming into the season. How about that? His most in any one season was five, actually six. Five in Mobile and one in Reno combined six in 2014. But he hits his first major league home run tonight against Mike Fires. And here's Gerard Dyson top of the lineup. Pitch misses away for a ball one and oh. And Valencia had been struggling and was chasing some pitches last night. He was five for 35 on the season. So tonight they elected to go to Freeman and it paid off. It did pay off, but sometimes managers like to keep those guys in there against guys they've had success against, get them comfortable, get them swinging. Or you get Wally Pitt. <laughs> Freeman hit that ball well. Okay, Freeman's never played first base before in his life. He's playing first tonight. Never hit a big league home run. Never hit a big league home run. He's getting it all done in one night. Well, let's just keep it right there. 
Yeah. Way to go, Mike. That's it. That's it. Dyson with a walk, a stolen base, and a run scored his first time up. And that kind of set the tone for the inning. You walk Dyson, and then you just have to be concerned with him the rest of the inning, and it kind of your focus is not 100 percent on the hitters. No, point. we've heard we when Gerard Dyson was with the Kansas City Royals playing in the playoffs, it, you know, it was if you walk him, it's a double. Same thing you say about Jose Altuve. You put him on first, it's a double because he's going to steal second base, if not third base, depending on who's hitting behind him. He stole second. He was on his way to third when Cano's base hit went into center field. And the Mariners would score two runs in that inning. Fires 2 2 pitches grounded just foul. Played by Guriel. And it's going to slice out of play. Corey Chikaoki gives it a look, but he knows this field as well as anybody, having played here last year. And it's two and two. There's Nori getting a chance to play in the series for the first time. A lot of handshakes and hugs around the stadium for Nori as he made his return back as an Astro. Upstairs, and now the count is three and two. With a record of two and seven coming in. Two wins coming against the Astros, one at Minute Maid Park and one here on Monday. In the air, right field, Josh Reddick towards the line. Two outs. You can get single game tickets for the 2017 season and watch your Astros take on top AL teams while enjoying exciting promotions like big and bright Friday nights, Keiko's Corner, and the brand new Stro Zone. Visit Astros.com for more information or you can call 1 877 9 Astros. Astros back in town next week for a four game series against the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim. They won another crazy game last night. First place right now in the AL West. Los Angeles out to a 6 and 2 start. Pitch low and away. 1 and 0 to Mitch Hanniger. Hanniger struck out on a changeup his first time up. Bat foul ball down the left field side and out of play. One ball and one strike. Sold out crowd on Monday night for the home opener. Last night at about 18,000. Tonight looks like a little less than that. It's been a cool week here in Seattle. Julia can attest to that. I'll tell you what, I can attest to that too. It's not going to get any better in Oakland. It's been chilly here. At least there's no more Candlestick Park. Oh man, was that one of the worst places ever? Ever. Ever. <laughs> <laughs> oh, in, man. in the middle of July, it could be freezing. I, it, I, I, I remember going there as, uh, when I was in school at Cal. Uh, we literally in July, as we look at today's actual Seattle forecast, currently 58, but it is a little bit chillier than that. Not bad today compared no. to the other two. But that is exactly what Julia is feeling. She feels in this. This is her Seattle forecast. <laughs> she doesn't, she she doesn't hold back. She gives the numbers to the guys in the yes. truck. I yes. forgot my earmuffs today. Yeah. It feels like. <laughs> Un uncle. I know, right? <laughs> Julia will be the first one on the flight. My nose and fingers have been frozen for three days. <laughs> 
It is a little warmer we hear. Well, Todd, it, Todd's, you, you've done the sideline thing. I uh -huh. mean, are you grateful to be up in the booth now and enjoy these heaters that we have? Yeah. And, you know, the hot coffee we have brought to us every inning. This is a, just a cold ballpark. There's no warm spot. Press box is open. I mean, once you're here at 2 o'clock, you are in the elements all day. On the ground, backhanded, and now Bobble Bregman recovers, but not in time. Should be an infield hit. Hanniger, tough play for Bregman. Lives with two outs. Yeah, it should be a hit. Hanniger's been swinging the bat well, and if that is a hit, I believe he has a seven game hitting streak going now. But a bullet down that left field line. Bregman did a good job, got himself in a good position. It just kind of jumped when it got to the dirt, kind of jumped on him a little bit. He did a good job of knocking it down. But Hanniger runs well. And again, I can't tell you how hard it is to play third base when you've got a guy that can run. You have to make these plays perfectly. Almost held on to it, rattled around in there a little bit. It seems like there's been an inordinate inordinate now amount of ground balls on two hops that have been smashed to Bregman's backhand side this year. And he's had a lot of difficult chances to the backhand side. He really has. He's been tested. He was up for the challenge last year, made some phenomenal plays, and that's why he is playing third base. But you get in these funks sometimes where it just seems like the ball finds you and it's just it's an in-between hop. It's maybe one too many steps to your right. Doesn't hit you in the right spot in the glove like you just saw right there. But you just got to fight through those things. But at third base, you got to play it perfectly to get some of these guys to run. Hanniger, not a great jump, but he gets a stolen base. Throw goes into the runner. And he has a stolen base. That'll be his second steal of the season. Brian McCann doing everything he can. Sometimes they steal that off the pitcher. Good wheels by Hanniger. Yeah, Hanniger is going to have a chance to, to run a little bit this year in that second spot in the lineup. Combination of speed and power coming over from the Arizona Diamondbacks. Here's Robbie Cano with a 2 0 count. And it's 3 0. First base is open. But Nelson Cruz is on deck. Foul back to 3 0 pitch. Cano with a single his first time up, scoring the game's first run. Cano, who had 25 runs batted in against the Astros last year with his third run batted in of this series. Those 25 RBIs not only represented the most for one player against a, an opposing team in 2016, it also was the third highest total in franchise history for an opponent against the Astros. In the air, shallow right center field. Josh Reddick will come in, make the play. So a runner left on. We're through two. It is three nothing Seattle.
local steel dealer, Yuli Gurriel, had himself a nice night last night. Really did. That was the one right there that set up everything in that sixth inning for the Astros to put on a couple of runs, but it was good to see him getting the head out, barreling some pitches up, showing that good exit velo. But anytime you go out there and get three hits, you're having yourself a very good night. Here's Yuli leading off the third inning. Gurriel, then Norioki, and the top of the order, George Springer. Astros down 3 0. See what he did coming into last night and what he did last night. Only time he retired was a 100 mile an hour line drive. Here's one in the left center field, pretty well hit, but Martin will make the play. So Yuli's at bats have been better so far the last couple of nights than we've seen at any previous point this season. Yeah, it's good to see A.J. Hinge was talking about him earlier. Pretty unique swing, almost like Julio Franco for me. Kind of points the end of the bat at the pitcher. Can rage on the fastball. Just got a hair too quick on that pitch right down the middle. Still a good swing. Yeah, I like that comparison. I haven't heard you use that before. Yeah. I try and watch these guys and relate to guys who I played against. And that swing right there is very unique for Yuli. And Julio Franco was a very unique hitter in the sense that he would really wrap that bat around and point the the barrel end of the bat towards the pitcher before he started his swing. Here's Norioki getting a chance to start tonight with a right handed pitcher on the mound for the opposition opposition just the second time in eight games we've seen a righty start against the Astros and Nori making his fifth start of the season. Out of one and one. Giovanni Gallardo so far allowing just the one hit. He did walk a batter but that was a race on a double play to end the second inning. Called strike one and two. Aoki last year for Seattle hit 283 with four home runs and 28 runs batted in. That's something he did very often here in Seattle, spoiling two strike pitches. That's why he's here with the Astros. Just be a nuisance there at the bottom of the order. Kind of peck away, punch away. We've seen him shoot a couple of baseballs firmly to that left field side. Hence the shift that the outfield is in right now. A ground ball to the shortstop Motter who makes the play on the move. Oki retired for the second out in the third. Five home runs in the first nine games. Astros all time. Lance Berkman in 06. Dropped six bombs. Of course, Jimmy Wynn. Perennial home run threats on that list, huh? Glenn Davis. Toy Cannon, Jimmy Wynn, and Lance Berkman. George is on a lot of good lists this year. Yeah, he is. He's <laughs> on a lot of good lists. That leadoff list, he'll be on for the rest of his life. Quickest to three leadoff home runs, quickest to four. He's got a shot to be the quickest to five very easily as he's down to the count, nothing and one. He's got 18 games to get there, almost three weeks. 0-1 pitch is on the corner, nothing and two. Gallardo so far has spotted his fastball well. We talked about how control can be an issue for this 31-year-old. But he's done a good job spotting the glove of Mike Zanino. Now Zanino wants one up and in instead of gets it up and away. It's one and two. Springer also tied for the RBI lead in the AL coming into today. With nine. You kind of said that like it was expected and it's normal. But he's a leadoff man. <laughs> he's leading the league. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, nine RBIs out of the top spot of your lineup. Yeah, there you go. For a team struggling to score runs. Yes. And yesterday was a little bit of an outbreak, but before that, 21 runs in eight games. Yeah, I'm not sure that's a, something that your offense is going to tout. That your leadoff man is leading in RBIs. You'd like to have that 3 4 guy be the, be the one that's doing it. This time, George hits one on the right side. Gallardo covers a 1 2 3 inning for the Mariner right hander. We're through two and a half. It's 3 0 Seattle.
the Astros, bottom of the third. It is time to play Name That Astro. This is brought to you by your local Honda dealer. Here are your clues. Make sure to tweet us your best guess. 3100 NCAA champion and try as you might. Those are your three clues. Who is that Astro? We'll name that Astro later in the broadcast. Todd. All right, Julia, bottom half of the third inning. Nelson Cruz will lead things off against Mike Byers. And Cruz fouls one back. Cruz was not only a 3,100 guy last year, he was a 4,100 guy. Do you have the uh, name of the Astro? Tough not one. yet. I'm yeah. Googling it. <laughs> Astros <laughs> fans are good at this. I'm kidding. 43,105 for Nelson Cruz last season. Big swing, no contact. Nothing in two. Fires has been working through some situations so far in the first couple of innings. A leadoff walk. And then two runs would eventually score in the first, and a leadoff home run in the second. A couple of stolen bases in the mix. Fires as he works here in the third inning. Already has his pitch count up to 60 pitches with his next one. That's what I was noticing too. Nobody out here in the third. It is doing some serious work. Good news is the Astros have the day off tomorrow, so they can kind of unload their bullpen if they need to. But you never want to see your starting pitcher with this kind of pitch count through six outs of the game. Let's see if Fires can lock it in here his second time through the lineup. This inning he'll face Cruz, Kyle Seeger, and Taylor Motter. Breaking ball outside. Trying to get Cruz to chase way off the plate. Cruz has struck out 12 times in 33 plate appearances against right handed pitchers this season. There is a called strike. Right on cue. Striking out on a fastball in the outer half. Number three for Fires. Might have felt that was a little bit low, but that catches plenty of plate. And that's pretty much right in the heart of where Brian McCann was set up. That was a nice pitch from Fires, and now he'll deal with Kyle Seeger. Seeger hit a ball his last time up that could have been an ending ending double play. Here's a ball rocketed past Guriel. Well, Seeger now one for two. He reached on an error. His last time up. That's hit number five for the Mariners in the third inning. That'll bring up Taylor Motter. Honor made his first opening day roster this year. Playing for the Mariners at Minute Maid Park. Parents who live in Palm Beach Gardens, William and Lori, were there to watch as their son got to stand on the Major League Baseball diamond and be announced as an opening day roster player for the first time in his career. What to know the count to Taylor. Ball is hammered to left, and this ball is gone. Five nothing Mariners, two run home run Taylor Motter. He has three doubles and a home run in his last five at bats. Pretty good power numbers, but there are a lot of pitches out of Mike Fires' right arm that are covering a lot of the, the big part of the plate. Like to see guys miss that, maybe pop it up. But Taylor Motter is adding to that slugging percentage and that OPS here early on. No singles for this guy. No, he said, I talked to him before the game, he said it took him a while to feel comfortable. He said last night was the first game he felt good at the plate in about two weeks. And it's carried over to tonight. I'm a little disappointed to hear that. <laughs> Brad Peacock starts to warm up in the Astros bullpen. It is a 5-0 Seattle lead. 
We're only in the third inning. Fires now up to 66 pitches. Lenino struck out his first time up. Swings through that breaking ball, nothing in two. Did not miss that breaking ball in the middle of the zone. There's that curveball, a little better one there on 0-2. Zanino fouls it off. Well, it's been a battle tonight for Mike Fires, who pitched very well here in his last start at Safeco Field. Six innings of three hit shutout baseball in that start last September, but tonight has been a different story. Five runs have already crossed the plate, just one out into the third inning. High and away, it's one and two. Upstairs at two and two. That ball's hooked foul. Felix Hernandez makes the play. Knock it down, pick it up, and make it. Son happy? Yeah. It's beautiful. That's a good thing. <laughs> that <laughs> smile is priceless. On the ground, Bregman. With two outs. That went a little bit easier for Alex right at him. It's kind of nice. Just lay the glove down, let it roll in. You know, sometimes you see a four pitch walk right out of the gates and occasionally it takes a pitcher a little while to go from bullpen mound to the mound on the field and feel comfortable. But that was kind of the linchpin for things. Fires never looked entirely comfortable this whole night, starting with that four pitch walk. This ball is high in the air, the right center field. Off the bat of Mike Freeman, hit his first major league home run in his first at bat. This time he flies out to center. And we are through three. Two runs on two hits. It's five nothing M's. Nothing Mariners Josh Reddick 
leading off this inning who's hitting in the two hole for the first time this year for the Astros and was in the nine hole yesterday said that when he showed up to the ballpark he had no clue really where he would be although he was warned by AJ Hinch earlier in spring training that he would be moving around a lot and he said that's to be expected with this lineup of really good hitters it really doesn't matter where we hit there's a bunch of three four five guys on this team. But one more note guys on Reddick uh, just didn't feel like he was swinging the bat really well all last week but yesterday felt a little bit better he said the difference was a, a quick conversation he had with Carlos Beltran before the game something Beltran had, was seen and mentioned it to him said I, I knew what I was doing wrong but when Beltran explained it it kind of made sense and opened my eyes to it so another example of why the Astros wanted Carlos Beltran guys yeah, he's like Yoda to everybody not just Ooh, the young guys like Good yeah Paul yeah he's he sees a lot of things over there no row of hitting he is <laughs> Reddick takes a called strike. It's three and one. And Reddick's been around too. He's not yep. a you know he, he's a young guy, but he's still played in the league quite a while. And you still need those guys in your clubhouse that are seeing things, offer up an opinion. Reddick thought he had a walk, but he holds on to the bat at the last minute. Counts three and two. Let's see what our strike zone says. Yep. Good call. There's ball four. Now Josh gets to take off the elbow and shin guard and head down to first base. He's a leadoff runner here in the fourth inning. Astros could use some runners down five nothing through three. Reddick is looking forward to his return back to the Oakland Bay area as they'll begin a series on Friday with an off day tomorrow. Josh, longtime Oakland A, traded to the Dodgers at the end of last season, but. Excited. One of the guys excited to go back home. He's uh, that'll be a good homecoming for him. He's excited to go back to Oakland Coliseum. One of the few. He's a crowd favorite down there. He is. He's a good dude. He's going to make a lot of people happy in his return there, even though he's in a visitor's uniform now. Here's Jose Altuve. Altuve with a single to right field in the first inning. Mentioned after that hit, his last five base hits have all been to right field. He does have five hits in his last four games. Getting that batting average moving in the right direction now up to 237 for a while was such an out to un Altuve like sub 200 average. There you see three for 21 to start the year. Breaking ball upstairs two and one. Well, Gallardo's walks, we mentioned, has been an issue in the past. He's walked two in this game in four innings. Now he's behind in the, the count to Altuve, two and one. With a big lead, see if Altuve can get something to drive here. I think Gallardo was reading my mind with Altuve. Granted, he's gotten a couple hits in the last couple games. He's shooting the ball the other way, but might be a good time to put the runner in motion. A little hit and run, open up some more holes for Jose Altuve, who handles the bat well. Reddick runs well. But that high walk rate kind of makes you wonder if you want to put a guy in motion because you're not sure you're going to get a strike. And there you go. He's three and one. Altuve can really zone him up with Correa on deck. This is what the Astros need base runners and so far Gallardo's, Gallardo's walked one in this inning. Ball four back to back walks to start the fourth. It's really not what you want to see. First three innings the Mariners have gone two runs one run two runs and now back to back walks is going to bring your pitching coach out and Mel Stottlemyre and have a little bit of a conversation. I understand you have a cushion, Giovanni, but we can't keep putting base runners on. Some guys in this lineup that could make cut that lead in half or more with one swing of the bat. Well, if you're Mel Stoudemire or Scott Service, you feel so much better if Reddick and Altuve had base hits. Yeah, earned their way on. In a five-nothing game, the last thing you want to see is two guys walk, and now Carlos Correa's. Up at the plate. Yeah, that's actually the better point, and that might be what he's saying. Get in the zone and force these guys to swing their way on. 
Dorothy Correa coming in. Batting 257 on the season with that one home run. It came against Seattle back in the opening series. In fact, it came in his second at bat of the season. A bomb to left field that stayed fair down the left field line. Want to know the count to Correa? There's a strike. Tyardo last year, 38.6% of his pitches were inside the strike zone. That was the lowest percentage of his career. Spent the 16th season with the Orioles, was traded from Baltimore to Seattle in the offseason. Base hit into left field off the bat of Correa. Being held is Reddick. Dyson gets the ball back in. Bases are loaded with nobody out. Good job of fighting that fastball off on the inside. But again, the timing is still a little bit off for me on Carlos Correa. Saw him earlier in the year take a similar pitch, maybe with a little bit more velocity and launch it out of the ballpark, but still keep that train moving. When I talked to Gary Pettis before the game, and I asked him about the outfield defense for the Seattle Mariners, and he said he's had to make the adjustment because these guys are a little more athletic in the outfield. We talked about Hanager and Wright, but namely, Gerard Dyson out there in left field. He is very aggressive and very quick to the baseball. Today's league leaders are presented by Houston Methodist. Carlos Beltran moving up that all time RBI list. See, he's one behind Harry Heilman for 48th, two behind Willie Stargell for 47th all time. Has a chance to pass both of these guys, or both of those guys, with a ball into the gap here with the bases loaded. There's a strike. It's nothing at two. Beltron fouled out to left his first time up. Ball in the dirt. One and two. Just need Gallardo to leave some off speed. Up in the zone. Since 2015, opposing hitters are hitting 290 off of his off speed. And he gets Beltron swinging. First out of the inning. Nardo bounced back. He needed the strikeout in that situation. Now a ground ball gets him out of it. Looked like a little bit of a backdoor cutter. Now he'll face Alex Bregman batting in the number six spot tonight for the first time this year. Breaking ball called strike nothing and one. Bregman walked his first time up. Fouled away, it's nothing at two. Last night was a good night for Bregman. 14 hits entering last night, seven hits between Bregman, Guriel, and Altuve. Need those guys to light it up. Just a couple more names in this vaunted lineup for A.J. Hinch and the Houston Astros. Way upstairs, one and two. Yeah, good to see those at bats. Bregman a couple of hits. Gurriel probably his best night of the year. Altuve starting to roll a little bit. It's a big spot though in this game with the Astros down five to have the bases loaded and nobody out. Now one out. And Gallardo ahead of the count one and two.
after walking the first two batters of this inning and then a Correa base hit. Ayrta started Beltran out 0 and 2. Started Bregman out 0 and 2. Alex trying to battle with two strikes here. And he went around with a breaking ball in the dirt. Back to back strikeouts, only two of the game for Gallardo, and they've been in big spots. It's kind of interesting how Bregman moving out of that two hole all of a sudden had his, himself an opportunity with the bases loaded, but tough pitch. You want to try and help out the ball club. Sometimes you get a little over aggressive. See if Brian McCann can pick up his teammates here. Pitch away for a ball 1 0. McCann, like his teammate Carlos Beltran, with 11 career Grand Slams. Upstairs, 2 0. We're going to show some of that veteran discipline right here. Really keyhole, pick a spot, pick a pitch. But if you do get it, don't miss it. He does have one career home run against Gallardo. Away, 3 0. Back to back walks, a single. Two hitters start out with an 0-2 count, but now he's 3-0 on McCann. There's a strike. Ryan should see another one here that should be pretty good to hit. It's up and away, ball four, bases loaded, walk issued to McCann. And the Astros trot in with the first run as Reddick crosses the plate. It's now five to one. The Astros have got these RBI walks down already this season. We've seen two. One was a walk off from Evan Gaddis. Now you get to see the one from Brian McCann. But again, keep these guys moving. 28 pitches this inning, more outside the zone than inside the zone, as Yuli Gurriel is the hitter with the bases loaded in two outs. Breaking ball in the dirt gets away, but Zanino keeps it relatively close, 1 0. Tough read. You want to see that ball go behind the catcher. Sometimes when that Ball bounces away from the catcher towards that first base side as a runner at third base. It's tough, tough to tell that depth perception or how far it got away from that catcher. But no need to test Zunino in that one. Especially we talked about how Yuli's been swinging the bat of late. Away 2-0. Crowd starting to grow restless with the Seattle starting pitcher, Giovanni Gallardo. It's just been nibble, 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 nibble this whole inning. Now that same mindset McCann had in the 2 0 count, we can see with Guriel. On the ground, up the middle, Cano stops it. Throw comes home. Correa is hung up. The run scores for Altuve, and Correa is going to be tagged out at home plate. Carlos Correa had his head down the entire time, assuming that ball was going to get through the center field. Ran right through a stop sign. Instead, a run scores, but the inning's over.
how the inning ended for the Astros in the top half of the fourth inning with the bases loaded. Bewley did a great job, got a pitch he could handle and ripped it up the middle, but I want you to keep your eye over here. Watch Carlos Correa. He's got his head down as he goes to the bag. Out of frame is Gary Pettis. Has his hands up in a stop sign, and Carlos Correa gets it too late. Unable to shut it down. Carlos was assuming that ball was going to make it up the middle. Yeah, a couple of mistakes there. Looked like he missed the sign from Pettis, and then as soon as that throw came home, he, he may have had a shot to get back to third if he breaks back right away, but gets hung up and ends the inning. So Gallardo was on the ropes. Three walks in the inning, a couple of base hits. Astros had the bases loaded. They were cutting into that lead. It's now 5-2, but the inning ends with a base running mistake, and now we head to the bottom of the fourth. Mike Fires has thrown a lot of pitches through three innings. He's up to 75 right now as he deals to Le Leonis Martin, who swings through the breaking ball one and two. Martin batting in the number nine spot tonight. And Fires gets some chasing. So Mike Fires now with four strikeouts in the game and his first out here in the fourth. Keep an eye on the third base coach Gary Pettis. Waving. Looked like he was waving Carlos Correa but Correa had his head down. And then as soon as Gary Pettis saw Cano knock that ball down he tried to stop him. Combination of things going on there. But you got to run with your head up. And Cano made a nice play to keep the ball in the infield. Ended up getting his team out of the inning and helping out a pitcher who was in some trouble. Here's Gerard Dyson. Dyson walked, stole a base, scored a run. He is officially 0 for 1. There's a strike. It's 1 and 1. After all that though the Astros do get two back trail by just three now Gallardo lost control of the zone for that last inning and pitch misses by fires it's two and one. I'd like to see fires go one two three in this inning avoid the middle part of this lineup get those hitters back in the dugout get Gallardo back on the mound. I think that's a really good point you've got a guy who just went through an inning where he barely escaped. You can get him right back out there after a long inning where he had trouble with the zone. It could be good things. There's really no weak spot in the Astros lineup either. So you say you get him back out there immediately, and he's got to face uh, Oki, who's a tough out, puts the ball in play a lot. And then you turn that lineup right back over again. Off the handle of the bat, the knob of the bat. That was loud. May have pinched his hand a little bit too. It's a good thing he doesn't go off the knob. Remember Carlos uh, Carlos uh, Lee would go off the knob. He had his pinky hanging over that knob. There you see the knob of the bat right off the edge of it. Squared it up pretty good because uh, we heard it all the way up here in the booth. But Carlos Lee shattered his pinky, smashed it between the ball and the wood, wooden knob of the bat. By keeping that finger down on the knob. Yeah, he'd go off the knob, so his pinky wouldn't technically be on the bat. It would be dangling there, but off the end. And he did the same thing, kind of backed out of the way, and it just smashed it. Mm. Now the count's three and two. Broken bat. Who wants it? Correa calls off Bregman for the second out of the inning. Come get a behind-the-scenes look at Minute Maid Park. Learn all about the ballpark by visiting areas like the historic Union Station, Luxury Suites, the Diamond Club, and more. For more info, visit Astros.com slash tours or call 713-259-8996 to schedule your tour today. Well, two outs bases are cleared. Pitching coach Brent Strom out to the mound to have a word with his starter, Mike Byers. Astros had bullpen action up earlier. It was Brad Peacock. Now it's the lefty Tony Sip. As we play here in the fourth inning. This conversation could be to get Tony Sip loose. 
It's also a conversation. Hey, Mike, you've got 84 pitches. Let's get out of this inning. Avoid some damage, and we'll talk about the maybe moving on in this game when you come back to the dugout. But this is a big hitter for Mike Fires right now. After Hanniger, Cano lefty, Cruz righty, Seeger lefty. That might be the spot they're thinking about for Sips so of buying some time. Make sure he's good and loose before he comes in. The well, Fires knows he wants to stay in this game. It appears he needs to get Hanniger out. See what Hanniger did, single to stolen base. His last time up, struck out his first time up against Fires. Ball is rope foul, well out front, one ball and one strike. Hanniger made his major league debut with the Diamondbacks last year. Call up after a great minor league season. In the air foul and that is drifting towards the crowd. Reddick gives it a look and it runs out of room. Seattle scored a run in every inning so far tonight. Two in the first, one in the second, two in the third. Fires looking for a one, two, three inning here in the fourth. Two and two. And a called third strike on the outer half. Fires gets Hanniger looking. And Mike has a 1 2 3 inning. 5 2 Seattle. Mariners by three and time to name that Astro brought to you by your local Honda dealer. These are the clues you were given. 3100 NCAA champion try as you might. We had one correct guess on Twitter tonight. Just one. Wow. And that's your answer. Morgan Innsberg who had a great year. 2005 36 homers 101 RBI USC. A championship with them in 98 and then he is the manager of the Tri City Valley Cats. Good luck to Morgan this year. Yeah absolutely. Tri City Morgan Ensberg hopefully they have a great year. Sounds good. Good to name that Astro tonight. Tough locked one. them up when you only get one answer. Absolutely. One correct answer I apologize. 
Nora Oki will lead things off for the Astros against his 2016. How about some Morgan Ensberg flashback? He had some of the best raw power I've seen from anybody. When he was aggressive and going after pitches, there's not many pitches he could barrel up and drive out of any part of the ballpark, especially in Maid Park. Hence the reason I got traded. <laughs> Couldn't blame him. Yep. We, we had fun in 2003. I think we combined for 35 home runs. I think he hit 30 of them. <laughs> like 100 some RBIs. He may have had 80 or 90 of them. <laughs> he did have some pop. He really did. He didn't like kangaroo court much, though. He didn't? No. Why is that? He got picked on a little bit. Young guy. Young guy. Some some fun mistakes. He, he was a very energetic player. He hit a bomb and you know he fist pump. He was excited. Was that kangaroo court material? Well, when you got Bagwell, Biggio, and Austin, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a more stoic group. Morgan could pick it too. Yeah. I mean, he was he was a well-rounded ball player. So when you're a young player and you continue to get fined, do you ever have? You ever get to make a case for yourself? Oh yeah. Sometimes that backfires. <laughs> then you get fined double. <laughs> yeah. Because if you that's that's typically what it is. If you decide to fight the case, you automatically know that the fine will be doubled if you lose. So it's almost not worth it. Well, it Just depends on the judge too. And I think that year it was Jose Cruz. Okay. Cheo. Yeah. Because we were having some issues with uh, some of the fines. How about Aoki down the line as he hooks one into the right field corner. Nori Aoki in the second base with a leadoff double for the Astros here in the fifth. Said he was a nuisance. It's even more annoying when the guy goes out there and rakes a ball down that right field corner. And you got to love revenge ABs. A Mariner last year, this year with the Houston Astros. It's a tailing heater on the inside, and that's a full body turn to get the barrel out right there. Good start to this inning. Turn that lineup over with somebody in scoring position for the league leader with RBIs? Absolutely. You look at the last eight batters that Gallardo's faced. He's only retired two. Three walks, three base hits, and a couple of strikeouts. And now he deals with the hottest Astro of all. George Springer fouls one away. Giovanni carried that 5 0 lead into the fourth. Walked Reddick, walked out to Bay. Now he's facing the guy who has a three. It's in a three-way tie with Nomar Mazara and Troy Tulowitzki for the American League lead in RBIs as a leadoff hitter. League leader with those five home runs, major league leader in that category. That ball is hit hard to second base. Cano's going to think about third, but now wisely goes to first. Wasn't worth the risk there, especially in a 5-2 game. Oki gets to third with one out. Normal circumstances, you don't think about it, but the way George has been swinging the bat, it's been flying off of his bat right at guys. The reason he thought about going to third base is because the ball was hit so hard. But a smart choice. If you look up at the scoreboard and realize you have a three run lead, you don't want to risk that right there because that could lead to a big inning. Here's Josh Reddick with the infield back everywhere but third. Takes a call to strike, nothing and one. Well, you want to start chipping away. They got two last inning. You want to see them get at least one here for the Astros. Yeah, you've got to drive this runner in. You do want to extend the inning if you are Josh Reddick, but staying up the middle of the diamond right now on the ground is a good idea. Instead, it's a fair ball down the left field line past Seeger. Aoki scores. Reddick with an RBI base hit. It's now a 5-3 to three game. Josh Reddick with his first RBI as an Astro. Got to move all the way up into the two hole to get it. And some love from the dugout, but a good job right here. He knew he put this ball on the ground, but that's a tough pitch to get on top of. So Reddick with his first RBI last night we saw Alex Bregman and Jose Altuve pick up their first RBIs of the year. Here is Altuve. Base hit in a walk tonight. 
Altuve has been on base six times in this series. Grounds one towards the hole. Motter stops it. Has no play. Infield hit for Altuve. He's been on base all three times. Astros have the tying runs aboard with one out in the fifth. Hits his hits. Just put it in the right position. There's no chance for Taylor Motter to get Josh Reddick at second base, and there's definitely no chance of him getting Jose Altuve all the way across the diamond at first base. Slowly hit out of the reach of Seeger. The only one that had an opportunity was Motter. It would have taken a perfect play in Altuve getting shot down at first base and not making it to first in order for that to be a great play because <laughs> there's no way he was going to get Altuve running down that line. Now a chance for Carlos Correa who was caught in between third and home on a base hit stopped by Cano two runners on one out. I heard it trying to work through his fifth inning of work. Through three the Astros had. Ten men to the plate just one over the minimum but now in the fourth. Three walks two base hits in the fifth three more base hits. Evan Scribner begins to throw in the Seattle bullpen. Breaking ball ahead of the count nothing and two on Correa. It's an 0-2 count, but I'm just a little over overdue for a Carlos Correa home run. Right now would be a kind of cool time. Yeah, it would. Just saying. Away, one and two. Correa hit a home run, his second at bat of the season. Line drive to right field coming on Hanager. He makes a sliding catch for out number two. Well hit. They caught by the Mariners right fielder. Good play by Hanager. Tough sinking line drive. Carlos Correa. Really trying to force the ball to the right side of the diamond. Got a pitch up in the zone. Kind of inside out of it, but hit it well. Right into the pocket. So two outs, two on. Here's Carlos Beltran. Beltran batted with the bases loaded his last time up and nobody out and struck out. Carlos 0 for 2 on the night. Gallardo at 83 pitches. Like last at bat, able to spot that fastball on the outside half against Beltron. It's one and one. Astros scoring two in the fourth, one more here in the fifth. Altuve with his third multi hit game in his last four. Foul. And it's one and two. By Zanino. Everybody's slowly but surely getting on the RBI board for the Astros. We mentioned first RBI for Reddick earlier in the game. Yuli Guriel had his first RBI of the season. Last night, Bregman and Altuve. Correa is a guy who hasn't had an RBI since game one of the season. It's crazy to think about, but it's good to see these guys getting scoring runs other than the home, a home run. Getting base hits, getting base runners on, a couple of timely knocks. On the ground, base hit into right field. Around third comes Reddick. He's going to score. Beltron with a two out RBI single. 
It's now a one run game at five to four. Nicely done. A lot of breaking balls down in the zone in this AP for Carlos Beltran. Talked about Mike Freeman out there at first base. Doesn't play over there all that often. But you get an elevated, a little bit of a cut fastball up in the zone and beat that shift when you hit it firmly through there. Little dance step by Altuve to get out of the way and gets to second base. Well, if you're Scott Service and Mel Stottlemyre right now, you've got a little bit of an issue. You've got a starter who has not been effective for the last two innings, but you also have a bullpen that has given up, given up a lot of runs this year. Dwayne Lyon, it's probably tough for him to get the hook, knowing what that bullpen has been through in the last, well, I guess, the first ten games of the season. Another RBI moves you up the chain, tied with Harry Heilman. Very soon, Evan Gaddis is going to be accurate. He is. Kind of jumped the gun a little bit, didn't he? He said in his post game interview with Julia that he passed Willie Stargell. That's to come soon. Just one away. Here's Alex Bregman. All strike, nothing and one. Seven men to the plate in the fourth. Seven more here in the fifth. Bregman batting with two outs and two on. Astros offense coming alive the last couple of nights. Grounded towards third. Seeger will take it to third himself for the force out, and that'll do it for the Astros. But two more in this inning, and it's a one run game, 5 4 Seattle. Sports is presented by HEB. No store does more than my HEB. And by Southwest Airlines. Yes to low fares with nothing to hide. That's transparency. Astros battling back two in the third, excuse me, two in the fourth, two in the fifth. They're now down five four as we head to the bottom half of the fifth inning. New pitcher on for the Astros, taking over for Mike Fires as left hander Tony Sip. Tony Sip on. He's got himself a tough part of the order with Robinson Cano, Nelson Cruz, Kyle Seeger up. A little bit of a test. Keep these Astros in this ball game because they have definitely crept in. Back to back two run innings for that offense. When you're A.J. Hinch and start the night looking at the lineup, you try and find your spot for your lefty specialist, and this would be it. Two out of three lefties, including the dangerous Robinson Cano. Cano sends one foul, nothing in one. Cano singled home a run his first time up. You see his career numbers against Sip. Three of those seven hits, home runs.
Up the middle, past the pitcher, Correa to his left, spins and throws. Very nice play by the Astros shortstop. Pretty good play by Carlos Correa, ranging to his left. Saw those numbers with Robinson Cano against Tony Sipp, but Carlos Correa cutting into those a little bit on what could have been a base hit. Good jump out of the shift. That's what the shift does, too, is you've got guys with good talent, good range, but you get them even closer to some of these base hit, possible base hits by putting them into that shift. Good play. So one out, here's Nelson Cruz. Takes the pitch away for a ball, 1-0. Cruz starting to come alive a little bit in this series. Hayes hit his first time up, one for two overall. Now it's 2-0. and oh. High fly ball right field. Josh Reddick will wait for it. And he puts it away. I'll tell you what, we saw Carlos Correa save Sip with a base hit, but two years ago on this date in Globe Life Park, George Springer elevating with the bases juiced. Saving Tony Sip with an unbelievable play that still thoroughly enjoyable to watch. Unbelievable is right. It was amazing. Did you guys recreate that? I did. Julia did. Int. <laughs> Two out. Nobody on. Again, she gave it another good effort. Yep. It's all about the effort. Here's Kyle Seeger. You know, I was looking at Sip versus Cruz before that last fly ball to right. They had faced each other ten times, and he was the king of FIP. Two walks. Seven strikeouts and a home run. You like those ultimate outcomes. <laughs> they didn't need to, Tony Sip did not need a fielder for any of those ten plate appearances until that fly ball. <laughs> it was it was all or nothing. Yep. And here's a strike. Nothing to do to Seeger. Seeger reached on an error that scored a run. It ended up being an earned run for Fires because you cannot assume a double play, but it was a double play ground ball. Carlos Correa couldn't make the play. Also, he has singled and scored a run, one for two. On the ground toward third, Bregman. And Tony Sip comes in and has a one, two, three inning, getting Cano, Cruz, and Seeger. Nice job, Tony Sip. Through five, five to four. To you by Toyota. Astros fifth inning started out with a sweet swing from Nori Aoki, raking that ball down the right field line for a leadoff double. 
After a ground out from George Springer, Josh Reddick stepped up with the RBI base hit. Jose Altuve contributed, finding that gap at the five and a half hole. Salty veteran Carlos Beltran with a base hit to right field to drive in Josh Reddick. Nice fifth inning, back to back two run innings for the Houston Astros offense, knocking Gallardo out of this one here in the top of the sixth inning. Those two out RBIs really could be daggers. Beltran with a two out RBI last inning and Gallardo done 12 outs needed from the Seattle bullpen and they're going to start things out with the lefty Mark Zepchinski. He's looking Zepchinski's numbers in the last three games that he's pitched in whip under one. Lefties are 0 for 3 against him so far. Pitched in two games against Houston going a third of an inning each. Has been primarily a lefty specialist throughout his career. Now he'll face McCann and then Aoki is due up third. So he'll get two of three lefties to start this inning with the Yuli Gurriel in between. Brian McCann swings and misses nothing one. McCann's grounded into a double play and walked. It was one of the three walks issued by Gallardo in the fourth. And he's a veteran who's been around since 2007. He realizes that with a 5 nothing lead, that was a huge taboo in that fourth inning. Ended up allowing a couple of runs. Could have been worse. Got the final out on the bases after a single by Yuli Gurriel with the bases loaded. And takes a pitch away. It's a two and one. Oh, Gallardo's line. Five innings, seven hits, four earned runs, four walks, two punch outs. It's lucky you got away with four runs. On the ground, Freeman takes it himself, one away. Yeah, it all bunched up in those two innings. He was in pretty good control through three. Here's Yuli Gurriel. Gurriel with his first RBI of the season, his last time up. Ended up being the final hitter of the fourth inning as Correa was caught between third and home as Robinson Cano kept the ball in the infield. Yuli has been having better at bats the last couple of nights. Here's a broken bat, slow roller towards Cano who makes the play. Gurriel got down the line pretty nicely, two away. Saw so Yuli score from first in this series on a double to right. Kind of leaning out there when he hit that ball. Gave him a little bit of a head start, but he's hustling. That's good news. When he scored from first on that double, they were making fun of him in the dugout, waving him down with the towels. <laughs> Bring him the oxygen. Here's Aoki ground out in a double. That fifth inning rolling as we just saw this one's on two big hops to Motter. So Zepchinski comes in and gets three ground balls and a one two three inning.
front, bottom of the six here in Seattle. The Astros are celebrating Jeff Bagwell's election into the Hall of Fame all season long. A special five game ticket package includes tickets to the Hall of Fame weekend in August and access to exclusive baggy themed giveaways. For, visit Astros.com slash mini plans for more info. Todd. All right, Julia, we head to the bottom half of the sixth inning. Here at Safeco Field and the Astros will go to the second man out of the bullpen third pitcher tonight Brad Peacock. Been pitched pretty good so far this season for the Houston Astros. We've seen good life on that fastball. Been pretty impressed with the slider that he's come after some of these hitters with. Last time he pitched was on the eighth against Kansas City. When an inning and two thirds gave up one hit, punched out two. Through 22 pitches. He has done a nice job out of A.J. Hinch's bullpen this year, and he'll have Taylor Motter, Mike Zanino, and Mike Freeman. First three he will face six, seven, and eight in Seattle's lineup. Monter hit a home run his last time up. He's a big rip there and misses nothing in one. For Monter, it was a two run home run. Gave Seattle a five nothing lead. In this game tonight, Mike Freeman has hit his first major league home run for Seattle. And Taylor Motter has hit his third major league home run. Pitches away one and one. Since that home run though. Astros pitching has retired the last eight. One and two. Good slider by Peacock there. It's been a good pitch for him. What I like is that the velocity out of the bullpen for him has been up 93 miles an hour consistently. And snapping off that nasty slider. Just missed the corner. Two and two. Pitch right where he wanted, just missed it. Man, almost enough run to get that back over that outside corner. Motter try to hold up and he does it's three and two. Bullpen game now five four. Bottom of the sixth inning both starters out. Mike Byers lasted four. Giovanni Gallardo lasted five. And a call third strike on the outer half. Perfect pitch from Peacock. He gets Motter looking and there's one away here in the sixth. Perfect pitch, Peacock <laughs> bringing it back over that outside corner, tailing fastball, beautifully done, setting up Motter with that one. The alliteration. You know what? It's, it's baseball is a funny game. You, you look at this. Thank you. <laughs> You're funny. I'm kidding, man. I'm messing. <laughs> you, you look at Brad Peacock coming to spring training. He's out of options. Yeah. If Colin McHugh's healthy as he gets a fly ball in the shallow right, coming on is Reddick. He can't make the play. Falls in for a base hit by Zanino. Zanino popped that one in the perfect spot in between Altuve and Reddick. Speaking of funny game, Zanino did not score that up by any means. Nope. Just happened to put a parachute on it right in front of Josh Reddick, who was hustling in. Really the only guy that had an opportunity with that shift on Altuve's hustling, but. Even with the max effort from Josh Reddick, no chance. That's the st statistical anomaly when you're playing the shift. Can't take into account a guy completely pulling off a pitch and doinking it out there. Foul back. Nothing and one to Mike Freeman, who hit a solo home run his first time up. His first major league home run. Officially one for two. So Peacock out of options, trying to make the team. Who knows if Colin McHugh's healthy if he makes the team or not? Peacock ends up making the team, and here he is doing very well out of the bullpen. It's all about opportunities. In the dirt. And he offers another guy like a Michael Feliz and a Chris Davinsky. 
who can come out of the bullpen in one of these games where it's 5 4 and you can save your back end guys in case the game goes extra innings. He can pitch multiple innings. And that's exactly what he is in there to do is trying to get in that seventh inning if not through it and push that push those innings back a little bit further for the guys in the back end of the bullpen. We saw a lot of pitches from Ken Giles last night. We also saw Gregerson pitch Harris pitch. Don't know who's up who's down. Here off tomorrow. Harris used a lot of bullets in last night's game. He really did. Went an inning and two thirds so. He might be the least likely of those three guys at the back end of the bullpen to be ready to go. One and two the count to Freeman. In the third blocked by McCann. Saw a pretty good change up before that ball in the dirt right there from Peacock. But he's buried a couple of breaking balls plenty of confidence in. Brian McCann to keep those in front like he has. Hardly threw the changeup at all last year. Yeah, it was not one of the pitches he was real confident in. But you know what's great too is Brian McCann doesn't know that. He just knows he has a good changeup, and I like it. I want it in this this spot. I'm going to put down the changeup. Fastball inside, so full count to two of the three hitters so far. Peacock is faced. Tony Sip, a nice job in the fifth inning, a one, two, three inning, getting Robinson Cano, Nelson Cruz, and Kyle Seeger. Keeping this a one run game. Now Brad Peacock on, one out, one on. Back to the mound. Peacock, Correa, Correa to first, and unable to be held by Yuli Guriel. Safe at first is Freeman. There's a lot going on in that play. First of all, great pitch from Peacock. Getting that slider down in the zone. A little bit of a chopper back to him. But he had to wait for the umpire to get out of the way so he could fire that ball to Carlos Correa at second base. A lot of moving parts. Get a good look at it. Does a good job of getting it. But watch the umpire as he crosses in front of Correa. Yuli's been so sure handed at first base, but that one ate him up a little bit. Pickoff attempt. Yeah, I was trying to focus on where that ball was going just off the end of the glove. Sometimes you get in between. You're not sure if it's going to be a pick out of the dirt on a short hop or if it's going to be airborne. And that ball was thrown really hard from Carlos Correa, so a tough read, but he did a good job of keeping it in the vicinity, not getting past it. Carlos threw one of those. High spin rate fastballs that kept carrying. <laughs> Yulia yeah. was expecting it to bounce in the dirt. Gun by Correa that kind of handcuffed his buddy Guriel at first. So two outs, and now here's Leonis Martin. Takes pitch inside for a ball, 1 0. Oh. Been a struggle for Leonis Martin this year, batting 0.88 on the season. Number of years with the Rangers coming over to Seattle last year. Our team played for Texas from 2011 through 15. On the ground foul. One ball, one strike. Bottom half of the sixth inning, Seattle jumped out 5 0 on Houston tonight. Two runs in the first, a run in the second, two more in the third. Since then, the Astros have battled back. Two runs in the fourth, two in the fifth. 5 4 game as we play here in the bottom half of the sixth inning. Side two and one. Both teams with a day off tomorrow. Astros and Mariners with their first day off of the season. The only other two teams that have not had a day off this year are in the National League. Colorado and San Diego have played nine games in the last nine days. Foul back, it's two and two.
there you see the standings in the AL West. Angels on top at six and two. A couple of dramatic come from behind victories of the last two wins. Down five runs or more in each of their last two games heading into the seventh and they're two and oh in those games. It's insane how they've been winning some ball games. Two two pitch swing and a miss strike three Brad Peacock another good inning out of the bullpen. We head to the seventh five four Seattle. Pitcher on out of the M's bullpen taking over for Mark Zepchinski is Dan Altavilla. Altavilla in five games. He's got four shutout innings. He also has eight punch outs in those appearances for those games against the Houston Astros in three and two thirds innings. Comes at you with a hard fastball, 96, 97 miles an hour, and a power slider. We've got an opportunity to take a look at our forward spray chart. George Springer has gotten off to an electric start. A lot of it done with the home run. You see the five dots on the left on the locations on those pitches that he's hit out of the ballpark. The one orange dot is an off speed pitch right down the middle that he rifled out to left center field. But what I like is there's not too much down the lines, which means he's staying on the baseball good and driving through the center of the diamond. And we know that he has power to all fields. The off speed pitch was the chase to Young. Walk off home run. Three run bomb in the 13th inning against the kid making his major league debut. On the ground towards shortstop off Alta Villa. And Taylor Motter makes the play. First out here in the seventh inning. That means the other four, he's just hunting fastballs at first AB with those leadoff home and, runs. And crushing them. And <laughs> crushing. Hunting and finding and killing. Yes. Here's Josh Reddick. Reddick one for two tonight walk a single couple of runs scored knocked in a run his first as an Astro takes a strike nothing in one Alta Villa is the guy that made the jump last year from double A to the big leagues and had quite a season now he's one of the more reliable arms out of the bullpen for Scott service. Pitched 15 games for the Mariners last year and had a 0 7 3 ERA. So he's now up to 16 and a third career innings for Seattle and only allowed the one run. There's a line drive through the shift. Josh Reddick on for the third time tonight. Second hit of the evening. He's a one out base runner. Julia. Hey, Todd. Yeah, Jose Altuve coming up, who's been trying to get it going. And we've seen him do that in the last couple of games. And we've also seen him 
go to the right side, go the other way, beating the shift that some teams have started to do on him, starting back or going back to last year. But he said after the game yesterday, when I asked him, are, are you making a conscious effort for that? And he said, you know what, right now, I don't really know what I'm doing. I don't really care where it goes. Uh, he's just really trying to focus in on not panicking, not doing too much, and, and just taking a deep breath and finding what works at the plate right now. <laughs> Very honest. It's working this series. It's starting to come out of it. Well, it's an honest reality. Baseball is an extremely hard game. As easy as this guy can make it look at times, it can humble you in a heartbeat. He now has three multi hit games in his last four, including being on base all three times tonight. Make it all four times tonight. Altuve, three for three with a walk, base hit to right field. He continues to go the other way. Oh, he smoked. That looked natural. Most three hit games in Astros history. Ho oh, hum. The same. You talk about usual suspects. Mm. Seems like every Houston Astro list we see is, has those same guys on it. But right here, a fastball out over the plate. And that was he. That was meant to be right there. He was hunting a fastball. He got it and he threw the barrel at it like he knew what he was doing. That's a very good sign. You have to pardon me for being a little excited. No, you should be. I mean, everybody's been waiting to see the Altuve of the last few years, and he's shown up here in Safeco Field. Three hits tonight. Here's Carlos Correa in the dirt, 1-0. and And it was something you talked about during the series earlier, that the Mariners, they look at the scouting reports, they know he's scuffling, but they still treat him like the same guy that hit 338 last year. No, that's exactly right. Every guy in this Astros lineup, they talk about depth, and they have good reason to, but they are pitching to these guys like they are the all-stars that they can or have been or will be. And Altuve has just been able to find the zone a little bit. With six of those seven hits during this stretch all over right field. The only one he hit to the left side was that little chopper on the infield that he beat out last time. And how about the color uniform he's doing it in? That gray uni. Yeah. He did it last year right down the road. 376. Nobody did it better on the road since Ichiro. When he played here for the Mariners in 2004. So 2 0 on Correa, Astros down one, Reddick on second, Altuve on first. Houston has come all the way back, having been down 5 0 in this game after three. Correa had a home run and a sacrifice fly in the first game of the season, looking for his first RBI since then. And a called strike. 2 0, that's not a pitch that Carlos wants to attack. Backup slider on the inside corner. Just go ahead and let that go. That is a power slider, though, coming in at 90 miles an hour. Foul back, 2 and 2. Took a good pass at that one. In a little bit better location, middle out over the plate, get those arms extended. And he recognized it too, just missed it. Heard you talk in the pregame show about getting your foot down early. Looked like he had his foot down at plenty of time on that swing. Did have it down, and when you have that foot down on time, and the other thing I talked about is having those hands back and ready to fire. When you're going good, you know when those hands are set and loaded because it's, it's so easy to fire them when you recognize the pitch. Looked very good on that swing. In the dirt, count three and two. A lot of sliders from Altavilla to Carlos Correa. We saw a slider in the 2 0 count, 2 1 count. Barry's one in a 2 2 count. Does he throw it in the 3 2 count? Because if he throws that get me over slider in a 3 2 count, he might be driven. Rip past Seeger at third base. Around third comes Reddick. Dyson bobbles. The throw does not come home. Reddick scores. Game tied at five on Carlos Correa's third RBI of the season. Great AB. Great AB. Fastball down and in. Just dropped ahead and hit a bullet past the outstretched Kyle Seeger. 
Great job. That's being ready. You talked about having your foot down, your hands in the right spot. That's what we're talking about. Beautifully done. I like the fact that Gary Pettis forced the issue too with Josh Reddick around third. I do too because Reddick hit third after Dyson got to the ball. He was very aggressive in the sand and there was no play at home plate. Here's Carlos Beltran. Astros have scored the last five runs in this game to tie it up. Beltran first pitch swinging pops it up. Seeger in foul territory. Dyson nearby, but it's the third baseman Seeger who makes the play for out number two. Beltran who had a two out RBI single his last time up a little frustrated. But two outs and that'll bring up Alex Bregman. Bregman's had some shots tonight in that sixth spot. Struck out in the fourth inning with the bases loaded. Bounced to a fielder's choice his last time up with first and second. Now he's got first and second again with two outs. Don't fall asleep on those guys on the base pads either. Well, Tuve likes to steal the bases. You see Cano jockeying him a little bit. Carlos Correa's got a good eye on him, too. If Altuve takes off, expect Correa to follow. Correa's got him right in his sights right there. He's able to go off of a big lead at first since they're not holding him, holding either. You know, Altuve, if he goes, Correa's going to follow right behind, obviously. You look at Bregman's spring and first part of the of the season. Didn't have a whole lot of at bats during that stretch in the World Baseball Classic. Looks like he's still kind of finding it. And I think that's exactly what's going on. A little bit of a delayed start to this season because he did miss those two weeks. We talked about it with the guys back in the studio. That, that's a lot of cage time for these guys. They really take advantage in spring of showing up early, getting in the cage, working with Dave Hudgens and Alonzo Powell, both hitting coaches. Working on that timing, working on finding that slot that you want your your bat to come through the zone in. Work on the tees, soft toss. You can really slow things down and break it down, and take advantage of some of those spring training abs to work on things. And they didn't have that opportunity this year. Let's see if Bregman gets a fastball here. No, it's a slider. It's a call it strike to the knees. Yeah, Altavilla throws 96, 97, but he really likes that slider. But it's a credit to the Astros who can hit the fastball. Fights it off, stays two and two. RBI single by Carlos Correa in this inning has tied the game at five. Astros coming all of the way back. Josh Reddick, Carlos Beltran, Brian McCann, and Yuli Gurriel with the other RBIs tonight. On the ground, fair ball down the left field line. Altuve is going to come around to score. Correa to third, Bregman into second. He slides safely. Astros lead at six to five on Alex Bregman's RBI double. Start to get contributions up and down this lineup. Guys creating opportunities, not trying to get too big, drive the ball out of the ballpark. Working counts, but they're also taking advantage of mistakes in the strike zone. Two strike count, that was a pretty good pitch to hit. Blummer, we're seeing in these two games the offense start to perk up a little bit. They're hitting the ball hard and getting lo good location now. We saw early on in the season they were hitting the ball hard just right at guys. Now they're starting to find those holes. Last night, Astros fell back 3 to 2 after an early 2 0 lead and scored a four spot in the sixth. Ended up winning that game seven to five. That was their highest offensive outburst of the year. Tonight, six more runs. A team that had scored 21 runs in the first eight games now has scored 13 in the last two, and they're still batting here in the seventh. Scott Service in this bullpen. Mel Stolmeyer is going to have to invest in a new pair of shoes. I mean, Alta Villa had been their go-to guy. Yeah. Well, last year, him and Edwin Diaz. 
back to back pretty tough. To me that looked like a cement mixer a little bit of a slider that just backed up flattened out over the plate. And at two strikes just a good job. This is you know you cut down on strikeouts. You get short with two strikes and just put the ball in play. Good things happen. And an intentional walk to McCann after the visit at the mound. Again, in case you haven't seen a game yet in 2017, don't know, need to throw the pitches anymore. You just point to first, and the guy goes down there. So the intentional walk given. Now the bases are loaded for a guy who seems to be swinging a bat the last couple of nights, Yuli Gurriel. Gurriel came up with the bases loaded in the fourth and had an infield single for his first RBI of the year. Now a chance to add to the Astros lead. The pitch gets away. Coming down third, the scoop throw is not in time. Safe at home plate is Correa as the ball was bobbled by Altavilla. Astros lead 7 to 5. Sometimes when you throw that power slider, it's tough to block as a catcher, but not even an opportunity for Zunino to block this. Goes out there and tries to pick it like a shortstop, knocks it straight into the air. I agree with the aggressive take by Carlos Correa, but as the tag was applied, Altavilla couldn't keep the handle of it. Run scored. So Altavilla has allowed three runs in this inning. The guy who coming in had allowed one run in 16 and a third innings as a Mariner. Now runners on second and third with two outs. We mentioned how two out RBIs can be big. You get one from Beltron in the fifth inning. You get another one from Alex Bregman in this inning. And now a wild pitch with two outs. Yeah, that's what you want to see right there. That risk number going up 13 for 25 in the last two games. Scuffling coming in. This is real time. Ball pops up. Great read by Carlos Correa. Force the issue. Make the defense make the play. They didn't. It would have been a tough call had he held on to the ball. You can see he never quite had it. Man, that would have been close if he did. Kind of had it wedged in the palm of his glove. Never really had control the whole way. That would have been a really close call if it was a clean catch. Instead, it's 7-5. to five. And a pitch on the outside corner. Guriel thought it was away. It's now 2-1. and one. Wow, that was... Not a strike. It looked like he was outside. I wasn't sure what else to say. You are right, Blummer. It's a good couple baseballs off the outside corner. Popped up. Deep shortstop. Motter makes the play. But three more for the Astros, who have scored the last seven runs in this game and lead it 7-5. to five. Performance. It's going to be powered by Kubota. It's also going to be the guy that's on the mound right now. What he's done this season, he's been in four games, four and two-thirds shutout innings. 
showing good command of the fastball, really like the slider. Brian McCann has even called a couple of changeups that have been great pitches from Bad Peacock. But a guy who was out of options is now pretty reasonable force out of that bullpen for A.J. Hinch. He's so reasonable that he's facing the top of the lineup with a two-run lead, and there is nothing going on in the Astros' bullpen. So A.J. Hinch saying, this is your game right now, Brad Peacock. If this game stays in favor of the Astros the rest of the way, Peacock would pick up his second win of the year. Here's Gerard Dyson to lead things off. Dyson takes a call and strike, nothing in one. You saw Scott Service bring in his most reliable setup man in the seventh inning because of the top of the order, and the Astros ended up getting three on Dan Altavilla. Now Peacock facing the top of the Mariners lineup. It's a little bit outside, one and one. It's not where McCann set up, but he did a great job of receiving that. I'd like to see that pitch get called. On the ground, right in front of the plate, is the pitcher Peacock. Bare hand throw, diving Dyson is out at first base. Nice play. Gotta give these Astro pitchers credit. Dallas Keuchel in that opening series against Seattle was bouncing all over the place making phenomenal plays. Now Brad Peacock's getting in on the action. It's a thing when Keuchel sets the bar like that everybody else tries to match him. Swinging bunt good reaction bouncing off the mound for Brad Peacock sidearm sling it down there for the out. Musgrove had a pretty nice sidearm play yesterday. For the pitchers getting out there after their. PFPs this spring and getting the job done in the early going. Although Musgrove did have a throw that went wide after the first one was made. Here's Mitch Hanniger. Hanniger one for three, an infield single was stolen base. Now it's 2 0. Oh. Hanniger, a guy we mentioned last night, two years ago he was in double A, was sent to Class A to work on a swing. Ended up changing that swing a little bit. A little leg kick timing mechanism. I was just going to say the article I read is that he got the leg kick going. All of a sudden he just developed some pop. Studied some film with guys like Josh Donaldson and A.J. Pollock. And that was just two years ago. You don't see many guys go double A to single A and then two years later come out and lead the American League in every offensive category. As a rookie. As a rookie. Man, that's getting it done. It's paid off. He had a higher OPS than any other minor leaguer last year in baseball. Playing for the former Astro number one pick, Bill Nevin at AAA Reno. Ended up making his debut with the Diamondbacks. Three and one to count as Peacock works with one out. The base is empty. On the ground, Peacock making both plays this inning. One on a squibber that was on a nice comeback play and there's two away. The only thing left is he catches a pop up. He might. <laughs> He's done everything else this year. Charged in got a hard one hopper back at him made a great play on that. The Astros have not had a winning record through 10 games since the 2006 season. A win tonight would put them at six and four. And who would have thought one of the key contributors if they do have a winning record through 10 games is going to be Brad Peacock potentially. Good stuff. Robinson Cano, fly ball left center field. Aoki makes the call and the catch, and we're through seven in Seattle. Seven five Astros.
The eighth inning, treat your employees, host clients, or celebrate a special occasion with an Astros Luxury Suite at Minute Maid Park. Create memories and have fun in your luxury suite by visiting astros.com slash suites or call the Astros premium ticket line at 1-877-9-ASTROS. Eighth inning baseball new pitcher for Seattle is the left-hander Dylan Overton. We missed Dylan Overton the opening of the season. Birth of a child. Now he gets to make an appearance against this Astros ball club. He was on paternity leave and did not reach the active roster for the Mariners until the fourth game of that series. Didn't pitch in that game as he goes after Norioki here. Overton's a fastball changeup guy, 90 miles an hour. There's the breaking ball. There is the breaking ball. It had nothing in two. Aoki was a Mariner last year, but Overton wasn't on the Mariners last year. He was an Oakland A. Staying alive at 0 and 2. Can't teach that. Luke Gregerson starting to warm up in the Astros bullpen. Houston has come all the way back down 5 nothing in the lead at 7 to 5. Up and in. That's him. Okay off the plate. It's not nice. A lot of people question the helmet that Aoki wears. That's uh, typically the minor league helmet, the double ear flap. But I'm not. I haven't gotten to the bottom of why he wears that or why he feels more comfortable. He does switch hit, so that's a little less for the equipment manager to haul around. Because usually switch hitters like myself, Marwin Gonzalez, Carlos Beltran, will use the one ear flap, but we'll have two helmets, one for each side. Down low, with three and two. Oh, no, Oki's always gone with the double ear flaps for whatever reason. Yeah, I'm not sure why. A couple guys have over the years, but. I worked my tail off to get to the show. I was going to wear the one ear flap. <laughs> Three two line drive lefty on lefty for a base hit in the left center field for Noria Oki. He's been on base a couple of times, and here's Julia. Hey, <laughs> Todd, it's time to reveal our Chevy Stroll poll winner of the night. Thanks to everyone who voted. This one's about George Springer, who's coming up here. Which Astros home run record is Springer most likely to break, you say? The April homers in April with 52%. Bagwell has that right now with 10. Springer's what, five? Yep, halfway there. Halfway there. I like it. He's got a shot. Jake Marisnik takes over as a pinch runner. The leadoff home run major league record could be in jeopardy too. Here's George Springer. Alfonso Soriano has that record. The leadoff home run record of both leagues, he told us, huh? Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, he did it with the Yankees. Did it with the Chicago Cubs. I believe it was 13 in the American League, 12 in the National League. How about the fact that Marisna comes in as a pinch runner, the lefty pitchers out there on the mound. AJ obviously has confidence in Oki to be able to hit. In that situation, and then he pinch runs for him. It's a very, very good look by you to figure that one out because that's a great point because Jake Marisnik is the right handed hitter. Oh, he's, he's stays in there against lefties. Here's George Springer. He's got a 2 0 count. He's 0 for 4 tonight. That's your reverse matchup. Yeah. The uh, Oki situation. Yeah, he hits lefties, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. He stays in there. There's a ball ripped into center field. That's going to fall for a base hit. Springer's on for the first time tonight. Astros keep hitting here from the fifth inning on, or fourth inning on, I should say. Springer and Marisnik now on first and second, respectively. We well, heard George's philosophy on hitting. I'm going to get ready and hit the ball as hard as I can. He does not get cheated. Good swing, staying up the middle. Bringing those hands in nicely, leading with the knob.
Here's Josh Reddick. Reddick's been on base the last three times. That pitch gets away. Mariznick heads to third, Springer to second. Astros with two runners in scoring position. Marino's having a tough night back there. Wild pitch charged to Overton. As a catcher, you're supposed to get down and cover that five hole, but it almost looked like Zanino stood up. Infield in. Pitch on the outside corner, one and one. Two wild pitches from the Mariners' bullpen the last couple of innings. One score to run, and now the other has put runners in scoring position and drawn the infield in with nobody out. Reddick in the air to left field. This should be deep enough. Mariznick will tag. Dyson circles under it. His throw will be cut off. Astros tack on to their lead. It's now 8 to 5 on the Josh Reddick sacrifice fly. His second run batted in tonight. Great job by Josh. Left on left have been tough ABs for him, but that runner at third base after the wild pitch, less than two outs. That is a high quality AB getting that runner across. Kind of flicked it out there. Watch the catch and the base runner. Good read by Jake. That'll be the last man that Dylan Overton will face as Scott Service has come out of the dugout. They intentionally walked Jose Altuve prior to Overton leaving the game, and that is the end of the night for Overton. New pitcher when we come back. On with one out after the intentional walk to Jose Altuve. That was the last batter on the record of Dylan Overton. And the new pitcher is Evan Marshall. See what he did with the Diamondbacks last year. See the numbers 2016 8.8 .8 ERA, 400 opponent batting average. Claimed off the waivers from Arizona on April 4th. He will come at you with a fastball. He does have a decent amount of velocity, right around 93 to 95. He'll cut it every now and then. Curve ball. Has a changeup that he will throw frequently. Trying to help out this Seattle Mariner bullpen. He was a fourth round pick by the Arizona Diamondbacks in the 2011 first year player draft. That's actually the same year that Jerry DePoto was the Diamondbacks scouting and player development director. DePoto now the Executive Vice President and General Manager here for Seattle. So he made a deal with his former team in the offseason, acquiring Gene Segura and Mitch Hanniger. And now he picks up Evan Marshall, who makes his Seattle Mariners debut. 
after pitching a game with Triple A Tacoma. First batter he will face. Welcome to Seattle by facing Carlos Correa, who fouls one back. Down the line, it's nothing and one. Correa with a big base hit to tie this game his last time up. Two for four in this game. Carlos came through with a base hit to score Josh Reddick to tie the game in the seventh. He would come around to score on a wild pitch. Now it's 8 5 Astros, their season high in runs after setting it last night with seven. Says Jordan Baker, nothing in two. With that intentional walk to Jose Altuve, he's now on base for the fifth time tonight. Two walks, three base hits. He's five for 11 in this series. That's a standard Altuve evening. We saw that from Evan Gaddis in the last game of the homestand. <laughs> That was an ungaddis like three walk night. Took him 12 innings <laughs> to get those three walks. <laughs> well, signs are pointing in the direction of the offense the last couple of nights. That'll make for a much more pleasant off day for the Astros. They were winning games the first eight simply because they were out pitching teams. Now they're winning games even when they fall behind five or leading games even when they fall behind five nothing. Well you know what's interesting about this ball game here is they haven't done it with the home run. We know they have plenty of thump in their lineup. These guys are creating walks creating all kinds of issues for these pitchers getting base hits driving in runs two out knocks. We've seen a little bit of everything except the home run. When you live and die by the home run, it's an all or nothing thing. Yeah. And now you're manufacturing runs and you're putting pressure on the defense and on the pitchers. It's a good mentality for an offense to have, knowing that if they do make mistakes, you have the ability to drive it out. But it's also when you get in these stressful times where you're, you're not getting the home runs, and, but you're getting a lot of base runners, you can cut down a little bit, start finding some you know open gaps in the outfield, see some acreage, get those guys on their horse, running around those base paths, put pressure on the defense. Chase there and they get Correa for the second out of the inning. Well, Marshall comes on and picks up a strikeout first batter he faces. Tough they be when you got to face a guy for the first time with runners in scoring position. Good curveball from Marshall. So now it's Carlos Beltran. Marshall just added to the team today. Casey Fien sent out to Triple A. There's a line drive. Beltron into left center field, all the way to the wall. Scoring easily is Springer. Around third comes out to Bay. He'll score. Beltron with two more two out RBIs, and the Astros have double digits. It's a 10 to 5 lead. Man, it looks good to see a 10 spot up there for the Houston Astros. 14 knocks on the day. Great piece of hitting, attacking early. Gets an elevated fastball. Beltron does. Rips it in that left center field gap. Talked about those guys getting on their horses with that ball getting in the gap. Altuve scores easily. How about this Seattle Mariners bullpen? They have been just getting worked. They have allowed 25 runs in the seventh inning or later. That is not going to win you ball games in the tenth game of the season. Man, that does not make Scott Service feel very good about his options when he calls down to the bullpen. Service is looking on now at a possibility of his team barring a big comeback of falling to two and eight on the season. This is a Seattle Mariners team with high expectations. And they were put on by a lot of people who analyzed baseball for a living and said that they were going to be one of the top contenders, if not winning the AL West. It is early, but they are not showing signs of playing like the team everybody expected them to be. Alex Bregman, the hitter, and he hits one in the left field for a base hit. Beltron will go to third. Bregman with back to back base hits. 
The Astros set their new season high in runs and hits tonight. Everybody contributing. A little bit of foreshadowing, huh? <laughs> Evan Gaddis. Way to go, E.G. He was one day early. <laughs> he was out there reading tree trunks, apparently, here in the great Northwest and saw that in this series, Carlos Beltran was going to pass Willie Stargell. In case you guys don't know what we're referring to, Gaddis <laughs> said on his postgame interview that Beltran had already passed Stargell last night. He was one night off, but it, he ends up being... Correct one night later. He knew what was ahead for Beltran. The reading of the tree trunks, huh? Yeah, he saw it in the bark. <laughs> Here's McCann, runners on the corners. A lot of fun tonight in Seattle. Glad you're with us as we approach the midnight hour in Houston. In fact, Julia's birthday is almost over now at home. We celebrated her birthday here last night with a come from behind win and now you know what I asked for before the game what AJ Hinch asked what I wanted for my birthday what? I said a big win not just any win I want a big win look at that's all they have to, happy birthday <laughs> from the team Asking you shall receive <laughs> they've got a little work to do but I like where this is going you like the 10 runs I want yeah I wanted a nice easy win Okay. Happy flight. It, it's your. I was just going to say your birthday. Ten runs, still adding, hopefully, and a happy flight. I think they have a pretty good record on my birthday. The last few years I've been around. That's good to know. Yeah. Well, it didn't start out so well. Five nothing down after three, but talk about a turnaround. You know, if this. You remember when you asked me earlier if the players knew it was my birthday? They probably did. This was all just a big prank on Julia. Nice. Yeah, they kept it really on the down low. And after <laughs> the game, they're going to they say, do. you're very welcome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're going to celebrate with you with, if they hold on to this lead. And McCann swings and misses. They have to throw down the first for the final out of the inning. But Beltron with another big swing with two outs. And with that swing, surpasses Willie Stargell on the RBI list. The Astros on top of the Mariners. We move to the bottom of the eight. MLB.TV Premium is back and better than ever. MLB.TV Premium gives you great picture quality and a free at bat premium subscription so you can watch every out of market regular season game live everywhere on over 400 mobile and con connected devices. Blackout and other restrictions apply. Visit MLB.TV for details. Todd. All right, Julia. Bottom half of the eighth inning. Astros with a big 10 to 5 lead and they go to Luke Bregerson here in the eighth inning. Keep this good bullpen out and going. Luke Gregerson pitched last night, won an inning, walked one, struck out one, threw 18 pitches. The Astros want to secure this win and get out of Seattle.
Gregerson will face Nelson Cruz, Kyle Seeger, and Taylor Motter here in the bottom half of the eighth inning. There's a called strike, nothing and one. Oh. One, two, Busted. three. Happy birthday. This is where the heater is. Yeah, happy birthday. You get to hang out up in you the booth. Hang, that was our <laughs> gift to you. I found yeah. my space heater. <laughs> <laughs> it's very nice of us, isn't it? <laughs> no, it is much warmer up here than it is down there. Absolutely. Check swing on the 0 2 slider, and Yuli Guriel will take it himself for the first out. Gregerson was up all last half inning when it was a 7 to 5 game, so he comes on here with a five run lead. Plus, tomorrow's an off day. You don't really have to save too many bullets. You got an off day in Oakland, San Francisco before they start that weekend series against the A's. I also think A.J. Hinch wants to nail this win down, too. Mm -hmm. Doesn't want to have any kind of threat. Let these guys enjoy and reap the benefits of some good ABs and good pitching by this bullpen so far. Really good pitching from Tony Sip, one, two, three inning, and Brad Peacock, two innings out of the bullpen, only allowed one base runner. He would be in line for the win if the Astros hold on. You know, you come into town, you get shut out by Paxton, he's one of the best lefties in the game. But at yeah. that point, you're eight games in, you're just wondering what's going on with this offense. If they win these last two games, you know, three, two, or two to one. You're happy about it, but you're still wondering what's going on with the offense. To see these last two games, it's just like this is what you've been waiting for. To see this offense break out like this. It's it's crazy to put that kind of expectation on a lineup to go out there and score six plus runs a game in the major leagues, but this is much needed for that offense. They may not go out and do that the rest of the season, but it's good to see them blow up a little bit and get some big hits and have everybody contribute. You sit there after a week or so, week plus, and you're looking for your first RBI, then you start grinding. And four different guys got their first RBIs in the last couple of games. Yeah, break that seal. Mm -hmm. Open it up a little bit. Carlos had his first RBI tonight since opening day. That was a big one to tie the game. Carlos Beltran with three big RBIs with two outs. How about Altuve? He's gone from 200 to 275 in his batting average in this series. One two pitch in the air slicing new left fielder is Josh Reddick and he'll make the play Marisnik stayed in the game he's playing center. How about the AL West Kendall Graveman we're going to see him 2 and 0 with the 208 ERA. And then you've got the Angels who Blummer have won two games when trailing by three runs or more heading into the ninth the rest of the league is 0 and 59. It doesn't make any sense. Yeah with bullpens that they have these days in the big leagues you expect those leads to stand. But that but last those angels in the outfield are making it happen and Sam Dyson was one of the reasons they were able to come back. Unbelievable but Sam Dyson's going through it right now. The Rangers in general as Taylor Motter continues to get extra base hits Motter who had three consecutive doubles last night now has a home run in the double tonight. He's a two out base runner for the Mariners. Getting a chance to play some shortstop with the injury to Segura and coming through. Big deal. Finish your thoughts on the AL West. So, yeah, so you've got Texas with Dyson, who's got a 33 ERA. He's blown two games. He came in at a tie and lost that game. Matt Bush went back to Texas. They think he's oh, going to re right. rejoin the team here in Seattle. And now you're hearing that the Adrian Beltre injury, which was originally supposed to be a short term injury, might be there we're hearing weeks long instead of just a short stay. That's a tough one to lose. You, you, you can try and mix and match in your bullpen and try and figure out ways to get through the season until guys are perfectly healthy. But it's going to be tough when you're nursing along Matt Bush and his shoulder issue that he has Dyson. You're trying to figure out a way to get him in a groove. But losing Beltre, I mean that guy in the clubhouse is a is a motivator. But also in the middle of that lineup, he's one guy that they have been able to count on for years to produce runs in that Rangers lineup. And play a solid defense every now and then, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Throw a little leather at you. Well, you know, having watched what happened last year, it's hard to, to make the playoffs in April, but you can put yourself in a bad position if you have a bad first month. Ask A.J. Hinch and the Astros of 2016 with their 7 and 17 start. Slider swing and a miss, nothing at two. 
Rangers are winning tonight even with if they win that game in Anaheim they would be three and five on the year Seattle if they don't come back they could be two and eight on the year Astros are hoping to be six and four and have a winning record through ten games for the first time since 2006 Gregerson ahead nothing in two doesn't get a chase there from Tonino it's one and two Starting pitcher for Houston, Mike Byers, lasted four. But then three shutout innings from Tony Sipp and Brad Peacock, and now turning it over to Luke Gregerson in the eighth. And the Astros have scored 10 unanswered runs. In the air, center field, drives Marisnik back. Tonino got a lot of it, but he got under it. In front of the warning track, Jake puts it, puts it away for the final out. So we head to inning number nine, 10 5 Houston. By Southwest Airlines, yes to low fares with nothing to hide. That's transparency. Always enjoyable visiting the Pacific Northwest. Astros and Mariners in the ninth inning of a 10-5 game. Astros come back to Seattle in June, the 23rd through the 25th. That's the next time these two teams meet each other after playing seven of the first 10 games of the season. Houston hoping to wrap up this early part of the season with a 5 and 2 mark against Seattle. 10 5 lead heading to the ninth. Evan Marshall on for his first full inning of work. Came out of the bullpen to get the last two outs of the eighth. He'll face Yuli Guriel, Jake Marisnik, and George Springer. Springer will get a sixth at bat in this game. Guriel one for four. Had a base hit up the middle just like that was stopped by Cano with the bases loaded though. He's now two for five on the night and Guriel we've seen better swings here the last few games. Really good swings. I remember calling some games in spring training where he started to drive the ball up the middle in that opposite field gap. And we were really enjoying the fact that he was driving the ball that way and I think that's when Yuli is going good. Everything is back up the middle. Come into some of these bigger ballparks get away from Minute Maid where that Crawford box is right in your left hip pocket. And you got to start focusing and shifting up towards the middle of the part of the field to stay on the baseball. He does a good job when he's up the middle the other way. Well, here's Jake Marisnik gets his first at bat of the night. Jake breaks his bat to shortstop. Motter to Cano. No chance for the double play. Kicking off that Oakland series on Friday night. Chris Davis and the Oakland Athletics. Be a good pitching matchup. Dallas Keuchel has been brilliant in his first two starts. 1-0 with an 0-6-4 ERA. Kendall Graveman 2-0 with a 2-0-8. Chris Davis off to a big start this year for Oakland. Lots of activities after a win. That's a good. In Oakland, that whole shaving cream. <laughs> 
Lots of fun, isn't it? Yeah, it, it, start, it started with the guy who's on deck right now. Josh Reddick brought that to Oakland. Did he? That celebration began when Reddick came over. And they've extended a little bit in the days since he's left. Looked like some bubble gum. And chopper towards third. Seeger to Cano, the turn in time to get Springer. And they get the double play on George to end the top of the ninth. Astros need three outs with a 10 5 lead. Sports and outdoors. The spry Carlos Beltran contributing three RBIs today. A couple of them with two outs. Two out lightning out of the bat from a salty veteran Carlos Beltran. Two for five in this game. Nice to have him in the middle of the lineup contributing. Finally made Evan Gaddis look like Nostradamus when he passed Willie Stargell <laughs> in the RBI department. It's going to be fun to watch those lists with uh, Carlos Beltran and some of the guys he's going to pass on the all-time lists yeah. after playing 20 years in the big leagues. But he didn't react much to the Joe DiMaggio number. Yeah. You, know, you know he's going to low-key most of these, but he's got to. At some point, you got to sit back and realize maybe, you know, have a sip of, a, of your favorite beverage and go, man, I've had a pretty darn good career. He really has. Yandel Gustave comes on. Try to finish this one out for A.J. Hinch in a five-run game, heading to the bottom half of the ninth inning. You mentioned those two-out RBIs. Those can be so painful to the opposition. You, oh. You're one pitch away from getting out of the situation. Especially on cold nights like this, the defense is like, man, to just get us in the dugout. But those are the toughest RBIs to give up, those two-out RBIs. Here's Mike Freeman. He hit his first Major League home run. In the second inning, his first time up, he's one for three in the game. When you look back on this game, it was a five-nothing game heading into the fourth inning. Giovanni Gallardo was in cruise control through three, but then he walks the first two batters of the inning. He's up a hit to Carlos Correa, bases loaded. Then he strikes out Beltron and Bregman. So now two outs, you can see your way out of it. But he walks McCann. Guriel gets that infield hit. Two out runs. Now all of a sudden it's five to two. There's a ball past Bregman the other way for a base hit. So a good first start of the season for Mike Freeman as he goes to left field for a base hit. He's now two for four. Young man taking advantage of the opportunity, not looking at the scoreboard and taking his own ABs into his own hands. Got a slider on the outside corner, just shot it past Bregman. And then you fast forward to the next inning. Beltron makes it 5-4 on a two-out base hit. They make it six to five on an Alex Bregman two out base hit in the seventh inning. Beltron with two more two out RBIs in the eighth inning. So six of the ten runs coming in with two outs tonight for the Astros. Part of their 10 run 16 hit attack. It kind of plays into that theory. It's not how you start. It's how you finish. Astros finishing off scoring six runs from the seventh inning on always looks good on a stat sheet too. 
Leonis Martin, the batter, down on the count, nothing and two. Yandel Gustave on for Luke Gregerson. Fifth pitcher of the game for the Astros. This is up and away. Martino for three tonight. Misses with the breaking ball. Two and two. Gustave, 24 years old. In his major league debut last year with the Astros as part of a doubleheader in Minnesota. He is from the Dominican, but on this cool night, he's the only Astro on the field with short sleeves. Pitches away. It's three and two. A lot of pitchers don't really like those sleeves. We saw Joe Musgrove go with the long sleeves, but a lot of times you'll see pitchers go bare arms. Kind of McCann back there too with the half sleeves. Pass on the mound, stopped with his foot. Nandel Gustave didn't know where that ball was. Made the out. Gustave making his mark, but do you want to make your mark at Minute Maid Park? Yep. With the Astros commemorative brick paper program, you have the opportunity to create a special message that Astros fans will see for years to come. Visit Astros.com slash bricks for more details. One out runner on second base. A little kick save by Gustave for that first out. That was real nice, eh? Getting to be that time of year. <laughs> Playoff time in the NBA and NHL not far away. Oh, yeah. Here's Gerard Dyson. Dyson batting for the fifth time. Takes a call strike. Astros have scored 10 unanswered runs in this game after being down 5 0. Popped in the air on the infield. Regman calls for it. Two outs. It's now four and two thirds shutout innings out of the bullpen. Tony sipping inning. Brad Peacock two, Luke Gregerson one, and now Yandel Gustave looking for the final out. As much as the offense is going to get the accolades, you've got to give a ton of credit to this bullpen for shutting down the Seattle Mariners, scoring runs in those first three innings and nothing since. Gustave trying to close it out and give the Astros a six and four record. Up the middle, Altuve's there, and the Astros win it 10 to 5 tonight in Seattle. They have a winning record through 10 games for the first time in 11 years. First win after trailing by five plus runs since May 15, 2008. I might even remember that. This team is.